feel free to start my ever Mr. Producer. of the phlegm cast we have our hell in the cell preview edition a uh, whole bunch of other shit going on i'm not even gonna bother with all the the traditional fanfare and all that stuff i got a happy birthday to witness happy belated birthday although it was yesterday it still counts one of our own celebrates the big 4-0 slam cast which is a very happy birthday to our own mr dave wade happy you could easily birthday. pass as a 30 year old easily pass for 30 yeah 30 not even 29 30 Easily. I hope I look at least that as good in eight years when I'm his age. It's alcohol. It preserves your bones. It is. It really <laughs> is. It truly is. It truly no, is. In fact, I go as far as to say I love Scots. Scotty top scotch. Down to my I, I love. I love a good scotch, too. I love a good Macallan. Macallan's a good scotch. Johnny Walker. Do you know what the great thing, and when I say great, is I mean worst thing about you hitting for is... Every other birthday in your life, people say like, "Hey, congratulations, happy birthday!" But when you hit forty, everyone comes up to you and just says, "I'm so sorry, mate. I'm so 40. sorry." Forty. Uh, yeah, no, they act, like, they act like you're over, man. At and you get a bunch of fucking birthday cards that say, <laughs> "Welcome to being over the hill." Yeah, thanks for that. Thanks for reminding me that I'm ever so slightly near to dying. That I've lived more than fifty percent of my life and I might die at any minute. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, well, I mean, that's basically what when you break when you break it down, really, that's what, what birthdays are. We're basically just celebrating. Congratulations, you haven't celebrating died. Celebrating death. <laughs> you know, we're celebrating not death. Like, congratulations, you haven't died this year. Yes, you survived. Congratulations. But, you know, you know, there's worse people to look like. Um, I was on a Skype call with um, Rich from Butech, um USA the other day, and when he found out I was forty, he said to me, "Dude, that's not fair. You look younger than me." Like, I'm sorry, I don't hold so the cards, mate. So there you go. You might you might have found whatever some secret to eternal youth. In... Mega Drive and booze, mate. Mega Drive and booze, and possibly a pinch of in betweeners. Nice. We had a wicked good in betweeners banter before. Wicked good. Oh yeah. Um. So getting right into the getting right into the meat of the headlines before we talk about Hell in the Cell. Uh, ratings watch 2016 or 2015 <laughs> goes on. Sorry, I forget what year it was. Uh, 2015 goes on. Uh, I think WWE tried to juice up their ratings this week on Raw because uh, they 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 gave us something that you know people kind of been wanting, but you know haven't been pressing that hard for. But you know, there's been secret fanboys that you know they were popping little boners if you're if you were watching Raw. You were one of the lucky few that would. And let's be honest, they're a pinch. Wo- the, the, my interpretation of it is they're a pinch worried about their um, dip in views. I, I think I think they're worried, but I just think that they WWE is used mm-hmm. to is used to you know the, measuring their popularity by this metric, and this metric is not as relevant in the this age of media consumption. Uh, as it once was. Right. Uh, they've actually seen an uptick in their YouTube clips. So maybe it's just the way people are watching are changing. Like, if some of these matches and some of these clips are on YouTube already, what's stopping people from watching it on YouTube? And what's stopping it from... Right. Uh, you know. I, I felt that they did... When watching Raw, it felt like they like just were like, you know what, no one's going to be watching. We don't care. Go out and do whatever you want. Consider it a light day. I think that's how they're. I think that's pretty much how they're going to per- pursue things up until WrestleMania. I think that's literally. I think, you know, we're not going to see any significant change. I mean, a lot of people, you know, have predicted Survivor Series for the Seth Roll- for a Seth Rollins title change to happen. I, I just don't think that's going to happen. I think, you know, the, right. we, we might see a resolution in the Money in the Bank. I don't think a lot of people are, are have that. You know fear that Sheamus is going to win the title at any point in time. 
Oh, I, no, I, he's not winning I, that belt. I don't. I don't. But we're going to talk about more about Sheamus later because I do. They, or, I mean, we might as well talk about it now. I do like this this stable that they think they seem to be forming now with uh, Rusev, Sheamus, and Wade Barrett. Um, yep. I always like it when the European guys get together. Uh, I think if they were looking for a vehicle to get over a certain Swiss superstar, this could be a way to do it. Put them with yep. these, three, these three other guys and have them run roughshod over the WWE for the next year or so. You're going to create three, four stars out of this. Have Lana be their mouthpiece. I'm creative booking out of my head, but I just right. want to get that out. But again, I think the ratings are not that big of a deal because that's an out become quickly becoming an outmoded uh, measurement of popularity. Do we and think also, with um you know with the um the network and stuff like that that obviously they have their massive own presence on you know um internet land that. They might, because of this dip in ratings, which may or may not be, you know, important or reflective of the status of the company, that they might start being a little bit more sort of um, uh, persecutive of all the people who, you know, flood YouTube with. Because I know I used to uh, use YouTube to watch some old matches that I can't find on, you know, the network. So are they gonna, you know, they're gonna take. I don't think they're. I don't company? think they're gonna. I don't think they're gonna crack it down that much because I think again volume. You know, there's no way they could incompletely eradicate it from YouTube because volume of stuff that gets, you know, uploaded to YouTube at mm-hmm. at, at a, any given rate or that's already on YouTube, um, very deep within, you know, layers. Well, of the only reason I say mm-hmm. so is it, it's a, it's a thought when you know blokes in suits at the top of a company, the corporate people who make decisions <sighs> might be thinking, you know, well, where does you know blame lie? And they won't well, necessarily I don't think look, on themselves. If you want to talk about people in blokes in suits, um, they recently had their investors teleconference, um, and that was somehow made it to the internet, I think. Yeah. Uh, and if you, you you look at Stephanie McMahon in the video, uh, she's you know projects that she's completely calm, you know, um, doesn't appear to be alarmed at, at the state of things. I just think they're adjusting to the way. People consume media in the 21st century, and people right. people reacting to, oh, the ratings are going down. The ratings are going down. The ship is sinking. The ship is not sinking. The ship is. Oh sinking. fuck no! If you think the ship sh- is sinking, people, this isn't TNA. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, uh, the ship is going fine. Like, yes, maybe there's ratings are down, and maybe the the creative idea, the two canes idea. Again, we've, like, we've I've stated this many times before. I'd be this would be a great idea if I was like eight or nine, maybe ten. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I just, yeah. It's, but honestly, it's, it's absurd just to see Corporate Kane this happy, happy to be at work, you know, type guy, and then it's just a, it's so absurd, but fuck it. I, it, it really, you know, it's, it's, it is absurd. And I think that's why a lot of hardcore fans like me are have tuned out. Also because it's football season. That's another reason why I think yes. it could be experienced. Packers this. are six and zero, oh, baby. Well, you can't you can't argue with the fact that a little bit of scaremongering is good to you know boost ratings as well. I think it's not even scaremonger. I just think it's the internet, you know, reacting to things that they really have no idea about. Man, I'm not freaking out about it. I'm not. The house yeah. is not fire. I'm. I'm. It's. It's they're competing on TV uh, for a period of time when the NFL is the most popular and it's ever been mm-hmm. in the WWE's history. Uh, they've never had to compete for go up directly up against primetime sporting events before. You know, usually right. on Monday Night Raw, you know, people didn't. There's a Sorry. no. What were you gonna say? Oh no, there's a whole bunch of factors. I I know I said last week. Literally every media, like every cable channel, is having this issue. Like cable news is having this issue. ESPN's having this. Issue. They're all having that issue. Yeah, it's it's, so it's like, a, a paradox. And the problem is, people on the internet, they're only looking at the WWE ratings, so they only see those in panic. They're not seeing that it's across the board. 
Right. Sports is right now the only reason most people, if they have cable, it's because of sports. The so only right reason there. I still have That's going to throw off the numbers. Just, just with that alone. Yeah, that, that's my two cents on Ratings Watch 2015, I think. you know, I mean, I think if WWE wants to solve their rating thing, I think that's what they were trying to do with this this you know mini Shield reunion, Shield versus Wyatt's thing. I think, I think they were hoping word of mouth would spread, that the people that were watching would text their friends or message their friends that weren't watching and tell them you got to turn on Reigns, Wyatt, and Ambrose are in the ring together, and they're facing off against the Wyatts, who all of a sudden are... Um, kind of back together because now Eric Rowan's a part of it because reasons. They said Luke Harper like wasn't around that day. They were just like, see, this is what I mean. Like I, I literally think they were just like, you know what? There's, there were just so many problems. They were just like, whatever. Throw out Eric Rowan. No one's watching anyway. No one cares. Like, yeah, know. like, like literally it was just, it just really came across. They were like, yo, Steve, if you want people to watch your podcast after, you better go out and just say something about it because the giant, you know, giant Philadelphia game starts at eight thirty, and there's going to be the Star Wars trailer. And Steve Austin was like, "I don't want to," and they were like, "Yo, seriously, just go out there, say son of a bitch three times, yay, my podcast after the show, and bounce." And that's literally, what he that's literally all we need. We need to, we need someone to turn around, like, "Oh my God, Steve Austin's now on it." But look, put it this way, I wasn't turning away from the giant Eagles. Yes. Yeah. Well, that was before it started. That's why they did that, you know. Right. And then they right. had after. The Shield reunion was after. It was all about just getting you to watch the first 15 minutes and the last 15 minutes. That was it. Well, I yeah. think... I Sorry. No, go on. You, no, you had a good point. Oh, I, was just, I think uh, that the things that they're doing to... Ex- um, there's obviously just it's a different time period, different technology, but Paul Eamon had a good point when he said, like, you're in between, like, cycles of fans. And uh, I think they're trying to expand their fan base, and that's yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a new day. They're trying. Older to... fan, older fans are aging out. Right, uh, right. The, the people that are coming, that were coming into it when they were kids, are now aging. Are now at that age where they're aging out of it. They're not getting into it as much, and there's like that few people like that, like me, that are just true believers that get sucked into it, and it's still something they believe in. Um, well, here's the thing: when WWE gets something right creatively, they get it right. It Absolutely. just seems – well, it's partly because they don't have the competition anymore because if when they had WCW on their ass, oh, they were pumping out gold every damn week. Oh, well, there was that – because there was that internal competition. Everybody wanted to get on the show. Now it's just like they wait for creative to hand them something. Okay, yeah. this is what we're going to do. And, yeah, creative – a lot of times creative has nothing for you or Vince McMahon something... doesn't understand why Cesaro doesn't connect with the crowd. And, um, I don't I... – He's not reaching for that brass ring, Nick. That's why. <laughs> and it's because he speaks four languages. Uh, I yeah, I heard a certain horrible. Bucky Beaver doesn't like those accents. <laughs> anyway, obligatory shot at Kevin Dunn out of the way. Yeah, that's, that's if you're playing the Slamcast drinking <laughs> game at home, when Nick takes a shot at Kevin Dunn, do a shot. When Nick <laughs> takes a shot at Vince Russo, do two shots. If Nick slams the drink Dixie Carter, finish your drink. <laughs> Oh god, we gotta we gotta write this up, man. It's like the the rules of the Slamcast drinking game are gonna be like if anybody who listens to this podcast are like gonna be things that are gonna be like scrolled down on like tablets somewhere, I guess. But yeah, that's 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 things for Dave. We have to come up with things for Leslie. Leslie hasn't been on long enough. Every time Leslie tries to say something and someone talks over her, you take one shot. Yeah. yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Every time Leslie tries to explain something that the internet got wrong, you take two shots. There you go. Yep. <laughs> anyway. And anyway. my rules are simple. Just fucking drink. Period. <laughs> it's, 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 when D- it's the tangent thing. Right? Anytime Dave starts a tangent, yes. you just drink until Dave stops. The or ball. you could just Someone. get pissed. Yes. Just saying. Yep. Uh... So, um... Cesaro's gonna get a push. I would recommend doing both. Everyone needs to calm down. <laughs> Cesaro's gonna get a push. Do we want to talk Do we want to talk about the other big bit of news now? I mean, there's gonna be... There was a notable injury again. Orton? <sighs> yeah, this is really... I mean... I, I feel bad for the guy, but... Yeah. I think this is gonna happen... This, this happens at a very good time. 
because there's going to be a how lot. Old is of... How old is Orton, by the way? He is Fuck. 30, he's like over the age of 35. Because the only reason yeah, I'm saying is there's to push a lot 40. of injuries popping up right now. He is, uh, He was. you got to forget, he was in the same development class as Batista, Cena, Cena. and Brock Lesnar. Yep. They were so, all in that same class down there in the OVW. Yeah. Oh, right. So it's like class of 92, but in wrestling form. It, it, is, it is almost like the class of wrestling 92, but they weren't all in the roster at the same time. When Orton and Cena were on their way up. When Orton and but Cena then, were on their way up, Brock was in the UFC. There are a lot of, you know, injuries, you know, right now. So do we think that possibly, you know, WWE need to, I don't know, change the way it rocks a little bit because people um, seem to be dropping like I flies. Think, I think I think we are see- we're going to start seeing that because if you watch the internet videos you did see that Sami Zayn made his appearance at the Evolve I pay per view. Yep. Uh, By that I meant though are we going to start seeing some of the, you know even though they're like you know big head- headline drawers and stuff like that we're going to see start some start seeing some of the older wrestlers um, not put into such big bouts or fights as they've been done recently. Yes, I think that's I think that's what what's going to happen now with, with the injury to Orton. Cena's taking time away to film a the film a TV series. I mean, they're crowd drawers, but it's not. And in we'll our get into that when we get into Hell in a Cell predictions with the Facebook shit. But yeah, they're, oh. yeah, they're starting to to those people are starting to like you know age out, kind of wind down, and yeah. it's. You know, it's a sad thing, but it's like it's it's like any sport, but it's like um, generation is um, basically I, I don't want to sound this make this sound like it's being like really negative or anything. But just, you know, an observation, it's like a generation that people grew up with or a generation that people loved and adored is basically, again, I don't want to sound like it's right when I say this, winding down to their usefulness, if that makes sense. No, I mean, in, in professional not so much yeah. winding down their usefulness. They have a shelf life. There's a shelf right. life. There's yeah. there's a amount of time where you can feasibly do this, like you, you where you have to work a. To put them in lesser matches. Right. Don't put them not in lesser matches, place. but they they you have to lessen their appearances. It'll become like the Undertaker, where it's all a special thing where he comes out. He only doesn't, right. doesn't work a full. Yeah, which don't so, get me wrong, because you know he's still a prime athlete. If I could be doing that shit when I'm up that old, I'd be fucking amazed. But at the same time, your body can only take so much damage. So you you, you know, I, I know it must be very difficult for these people to you know accept that they might be approaching the end of their shelf life. But ultimately, you're only human, and you have to accept the vulnerability of your body, and mm-hmm. you can't go on like this forever. No, it must be a very it, difficult thing. It must be a very it, difficult. It is, thing. but I think that's what we're saying. With with Orton's injury now, Cena stepping away, now is the time to to direct the focus on guys like Bray Wyatt, guys like Dean Ambrose, uh, the New Day, who I think are already in that position. I think. Uh, right. You have to also start coming up with now. Now's the time to push Roman Reigns. You know, now is if yeah. if the plan for WrestleMania is to have Roman Reigns be in your title match. Now is the time to put start, you know, building that momentum to get to him. Have him look real strong. Real strong. Real strong. Uh, coming out of this feud with the Wyatts. Uh, and also look upon your future. You know, if I take it in a cold sterile point of view about business, but they are a business. So they do need to look forward to the future. And you do need to start, you know, replenishing and replacing whether you know their brand names or not, and that you know their draw is massive, you're a business. You know that's cold and shallow. And, and, you, and I don't want to touch on that. That's why I was talking about the Sami Zayn and the Evolve pay per view. Mm-hmm. He was hinting about it in the promo that you know this is a, a change in the way WWE is going to do business. And uh, I, you know I hate to maybe big up what I've been saying on this podcast for a long time, but I honestly think that the WWE might be transitioning into having regional sanctioned developmental territories. Right, and not they, just I, NXT down there in Florida. Not just NXT down in Florida, yeah. but just these these feeder feeder right. promotions. So yeah. like have one in, you know, the Midwest. Maybe like have one in, in the Chicago. Midwest territory. One up in New, New York, York one down in California and Well yeah, basically it's it's in their interest. It's like any other sport. You know, start scouting outside of your you know traditional Oh well, I think I think I think they're territory. already I think they're like like I said they 
I, I believe fully believe that there is somebody in the WWE that watches just professional wrestling on loop. That, I mean, there are people that send them videos and stuff like that, and they have their own outlets for talent. You know, they know what wrestling mm-hmm. schools are, are reputable, and you know they yep. they have people that go to these shows on on the on the, on the like, scouts that go to shows, but you know they have their right. ear to the ground. Because you know, like William yeah. Regal, there's an interview he did where he talked about, "Yeah, I keep an eye on everything. It's my job." Everybody, everybody talks to everybody. That's all I'm saying. Right. If if you have if you know somebody in the WWE, you talk to them. You know, in in the business, it's just the way it is. Names get passed along, and work and work their way up. Uh, but yep. I I honestly think that this this could be what we're what we're seeing. We could be seeing a transition to this kind of regional developmental territory, uh, and and seeing. So later. we could be seeing, um, you know, WWE um, four point zero. You know, we could see. And, and, and we could just that's the next evolution, like like Vince going putting on WrestleMania on putting on WrestleMania, then the evolution to pay per view, and now the network and everything else that could be a part of this this next revolution in their their business model and how they do things. Um, yeah. I don't think they, I honestly don't think they would allow a guy like Sami Zayn, that's a talent that they have invested a lot in, in the future, to just show up at this show. I mean, you think he was, he's putting over, you know, Johnny Gargano. Right. Um, Without some kind of reason, you know, he's been in developmental yeah. for years. Yeah, yeah. I was I, hearing, you know, when he made his debut, and I think that was like 2013. Yeah, he he was. Yeah, he's been a, a long time in the NXT system. And well, the, the you know the positive we could take from this, um, which is uh, these people they've kept on the back burner who clearly are talented might finally get their day in the sun. Yeah, well, and we'll talk we'll talk more about that later because there was a, a very interesting debut this week on SmackDown. Yep, a very gorgeous debut, if you will. Hashtag teaser, um, but there was some other news that happened. I mean, we can't we can't go a week without. I give uh, up. What? What yeah. do you give up? I've been trying to tell you. Like, there's a specific reason they're going to like. There, this is a plan. Like, they're going to be doing this long term because they realize that they can't completely. They can't keep doing what they can't do what they did last time, where they completely cleared everything out because then there's no farm system for that. Yeah, exactly. Right. There, no, there is no yeah. there, there is no competition like real. Exactly. I mean, Ring of Honor is is you know the closest thing on American television that there is to realistic competition in, in, in the wrestling. But Ring of Honor is really hard to watch. Uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's not if everywhere. You're, if you're not exactly, it's really hard to watch. It's not everywhere. It's also not everyone's cup of tea as far as their storylines and as far True. as their production and, and everything else like that. So I get that. But they're their own thing. They're not, you know, they they stay outside of WWE, and very few crossover, you know, appeal there. But right. them moving into these 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 independent territories is really them, I think, trying to take out all these regional, small regional promotions like the PWG. I think PWG will obviously survive it because they have their own, you know. Uh, in built-in fan base that you know yes. will just follow them around that area no matter where they go. But you know all sure. these other mom and pop like little indie sh- indie companies that you know try and run off like they'll just be put out of business because you'll want to see all the top talent and they're all going to be at whatever the WWE chosen uh, regional independent territory is going to be. No, no, no. I don't think they're going to do it quite that way. I think they're going to do that. I think it's they're they're com- they're coming for the the small time promoter. They want as many butts in the seats as they can because there are sometimes where some of these promoters will run intentionally because the WWE's in town because they'll figure if people that can't afford the WWE ticket right. will buy a ticket to that show. Right. Well, that's kid, when is, it, kid wants to go see wrestling. The parent doesn't want to spend that much money for a WWE ticket and yada yada yada. Oh, look, it. ROH is in town. We'll go see that. They won't know. They won't ROH. They'll go see whatever. I mean, we for here, we have PWS. We have, uh, you know, Warriors of Wrestling, just to mm-hmm. name a few. 
my uh, friend at uh, American Championship Entertainment, Mike Morgan, who also recently had a birthday. Shout out to Mike. Um, yeah, I think I think it's really think they're coming for the these you know small to large independent companies that just try and put on family based shows. And if I right. if I'm one of these promoters, it's like the asteroid. I think that's coming. If I if I see if I see Sami Zayn showing up at an Evolve wrestling show, uh, I'm, you know. No, no, no. So what they're doing is, like, this is part of their whole, things are changing and they need to expand their base. One of the easiest ways to get people into their base is by having, is, yo, come see this show because some dude I know is going to be in it. And they need that level in between, between that and what is going to be their farm system, like you said. So they need at least one rung down from, like, Evolve. They need Evolve to have something that they can use to pull from. Um, I just think because Evolve, once the Evolve gets that sanction, Evolve will be the place to go. I think that's the thing. There's, outside of certain areas, like in if you live in California, obviously, and you're a professional wrestler, obviously you want to try and work and get on PWG. That's mm-hmm. your goal. You know, here in the Northeast, it's you know, a fucking free-for-all. I think Keep Evolve um, is pretty much um, a, a, a tangent from being, and by the way, let's see, this is not a tangent, I'm just making a point, so, which is um, evolve or stay relevant. No, that's, I, that's, that's pretty valid. Um, but yeah, again, if you're, if you're a professional wrestler in the Northeast, there's really no outside of your probably your schools in the promotion you know mm-hmm. there is no consensus place that okay this is the place you want to go do you have isw that's doing their own thing czw maybe that's the place that you like you strive to get to in, in this area mm-hmm. yeah uh, if i'm czw i'm a little nervous too because you know that means you know and that's a very more of a niche yeah, yeah, you're right. right. Yes. And you understand that, you know, it's no, very... WWE's ulti- not coming for that deathmatch crowd. Oh, hell no, <laughs> yeah. Like, we are not going to see the not. Cage of Death live you're on the WWE see, Network for nine You're not going to see Matt Tremont down in NXT anytime soon. <laughs> no. I mean, it's I still find it amazing that, you know, Dean Ambrose is the guy that came through CZW doing this type of shit, and now he's in WWE, so it's kind of... Dean Ambrose you know, is modern-day Mick Foley. Yep. Swings Just, around the way. Just Who, by the bit. way, McFoley had a hell of a tweet to the WWE when they announced it. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. That was great. <laughs> yeah. uh, With respect to our UK fans, don't say Undertaker tossed me off. <laughs> it's it a means completely something entirely different. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to gonna... make an org chart. I can't. Yeah. I can't, I can't explain. I'll make an org chart. It'll be easier. Okay, if that works for you. Um, so we're going to do LOL TNA. I mean, it seems to be the reoccurring, seg- reoccurring segment. It, it seems to be because they just keep giving me material to work with. You know? <laughs> it's so, the gift that just keeps on giving. So as we all know, because it, you know, WWE announced it when it happened mm. at their tapings that James Storm had debuted. Well, I guess and this was in response to a fake Jim Ross account. That, Independent uh, superstar James Storm, by the way. Yes. Because TNA, you know, witness protection. Spent 15 years on the independent circuit. Yep. He, I, I guess he asked them if they want them to, to stick it to, T, to TNA or not. Like, well, the Dead Boys, they said it. Well, here's the thing. If you watch the, um, this, there's a little uh, segment he did afterwards, and he just basically reads off the lyrics that are in his TNA theme, which is pretty funny. He just kind of rattles those off the top of his head, so. Yeah, I think they're. I think they let them say like. I think they're like they're treating them almost like wrestling refugees, and they're like. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm I serious. Love it. Oh my god! It's like the crisis we over ha- we have over here with migrants, but in wrestling form. It's, that was just, that's what I just popped for. I just popped for the TNA TNA series. Like refugees they seriously, they sat oh. and stormed down, and they said, "Tell us how bad it was." <laughs> Tell us every horrifying story, and then tell us who is worth saving, and we'll offer them whatever they want, and they come over here and be safe. Good. 
Like that just happened. And letting them, I swear, and they're letting them say, like, yo, how much do you want to stick at TNA? Because, like, Deadly Boys sound pissed when they came over and they said, like, yo, we were in TNA for like 10 years and we're back. Like, I think they're letting them do, like, what they want to do to, like, you know, grieve, grieve the process. There, there was this Scottish guy and this other Scottish guy <laughs> and this other Scottish guy who was kind of fat. You should sing it like Crash Test Dummies. <laughs> what? There was this Scottish <laughs> guy. Well, you almost sound like he who shall not be named. Don't, yeah. don't curse yourself. Yeah, sorry. Once. Sorry, he shall not be named. Love yes. you. Um. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna yeah, talk, are we going to talk about the other giant TNA news? Uh, well, I was going to bring up the fact that this fucking well, we could bring. I want to bring up the LOL TNA World Title thing because apparently, because again, they taped you know a bunch of TV over a ten day stretch. That the idea that their World Title tournament was basically thrown together last minute. That. It wasn't even, it literally just came out after this whole thing with, you know, Matt Hardy. Like, oh, it's going to be a world, because they, I guess, taped all these matches for a fucking one-night-only pay-per-view. So, which no one would order. TNA. Well, there's actually three of them, because we got that, yeah. So, it's not even, there wasn't even any idea that was a world title tournament until now. And, I mean, they announced James Storm is in it after WWE announced that he came on NXT, but... (laughs) James Storm bolted in the middle of the night. Like, goddamn wrestling refugee. That's James like, Storm. Like, goddamn Mal- Lex Luger in 95. He, he, like, like Benoit, Malenko, and... Uh, Benoit, Malenko, Saturn, Guerrero. Yeah, and the, the reason why there's 90-day no-complete clauses in wrestling these days. Yes. Oh, man. Oh, boy. You couldn't man. write this shit if you tried. Oh, no. So... Well, how I about consider the... James Storm to be the second nail in the coffin. Does anyone else think that there's a very strong possibility that the third nail in the coffin will be TNA letting having Hogan and his boys have one last run? Oh, no. do you think Hogan be able will get a final run? Hogan. I know we sneak back onto the WWE network, but do we yeah. think Hogan will ever get a final run? No, no. With TNA, he might. No, brother. No, oh. brother. Never gonna TNA happen, wouldn't brother. be able to afford them. I mean, they came and pay their own fucking talent. Even though they brother. did just re-sign Bram to a multi-year contract. <laughs> yep, they his... reinstated Bram's multi-year contract. Yes. Yep, He the legal charges have been dropped, so he's back on. <laughs> but the other big LOL TNA was the debut of Kali the Awesome. Kali the like Awesome! I just like to say to Hogan right now, um, rebuild, brother, rebuild, because you're fucked, sunshine. Kali is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no! Yeah, they announced their big India tour, and look who's right there, fucking Kali is Kali. Boom. Oh my god. I just got this image of Hulk Hogan in my head standing over, you know, Vince McMahon trying to ram his hand into his chest and just going, Oh, num shakal, oh, num shakal, oh, num shakal. Kalima! Kalima! <laughs> anyway, but yeah, there's. Oh, God. So much LOL TNA. I know, it's like, just when you, when you think you're done. I think they know that. I mean, it's, yeah, but it's good. Be... We we all take the piss and we laugh at it. But let's be honest; it gives us many, many amazing chuckles each week. The, we can't the take that thing, away from it. The next thing will be that Kali will have world title. It is. It is a lot like watching a losing political campaign, and like when they start to lose, they start to get really desperate, and they start to do really amazing. Like that's how Michael Dukakis ended up in a tank. <laughs> My it's funny. Be... We 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 had um. We, we had a political um, a person from um, the, the government on the TV this week and um, he didn't realize he was being caught on camera and it's like this. He, he said something and then obviously all the newspapers jumped on it and um, he said to his press spinner, which is, if I've learned anything, when you start to lose, that's when you start to lie. <laughs> Bang on the money, I feel. 
and a dust bunny blows by. Sorry, I was, I was blowing my nose. Sorry. Um, yeah, I just, I just think TNA. But it's can, true. You know, TNA can't get doesn't... any more LOL until they have. Chris you know, he can get more LOL. Trust me. I know. Well, I know myself and Nick. Yeah, say it every one week, of the knockouts but... winning the world title. That's the only way. Oh, oh, that's, that's oh absolutely... how there's LOL TNA. Me and Lawrence have LOL WFP. Trust me, it can always get dumber. Always. Yeah. Always. So, anyway, uh, well, uh, big, uh, it's like when you drive by an accident on the freeway, isn't it? Which is you slow down to see it because you can't quite take your eyes off it. You don't want to, but at the same time, you're engaged. And that's how I feel TNA is right now. I don't think they're a car accident. I just think they're a broken down wreck. Yeah, it's, I mean, they've hit the iceberg and we're just watching it, you know, slowly <laughs> sink. Waiting for the boats to come out. You can seal your bulkheads, but no offense, sugar tits, you're fucked. Yeah. Go down. Do, what's it they say with Titanic? And the band played on. <laughs> yep. Go down with the ship, you pricks. Yeah. And I guess I guess Dixie Carter would be the band. <laughs> you know what the really, really funny thing is? I did that video six months ago when I um, played uh, TNA Impact on the Wii. And it's one of the most popular videos. Tangent. Oh, it's just amazing, you know. Well, it's not technically a tangent because I'm still talking wrestling. Oh, we went through this before, Dave. It's a tangent. Sorry, I'll shut up now. I'm going to sit in the corner on the north instead. So, Big Zeke, Nick, retired. Um, yep. Yeah, I don't have a, I don't have any really thing really well, to say. Well, you know, way. he was on, you know, a Lucha Underground last season. He had a cigar shoved in his eye and spent the entirety of the season with a patch over, and he looked pretty fucking badass. But he looked like a, bo- awesome. he looked like a comical like Doctor Who villain. Yeah, but you know, he was the man behind the man with a plan. Uh, I think he was a guy that WWE tried to... Black Batista. Yes. Black Batista. Yeah, he was what? I think he was the final ECW champion when that title meant jack shit. He was the final silver ECW champion. Yes. Yes. He even had a run as Intercontinental Champion too for a while there too, unexplainably. I don't know why, but... uh, But they were trying to do... They were trying to make him to be, you know, the next big Batista guy and didn't work. Yeah, it didn't so, have any any bit of the the charisma or or, or the appeal. You beat, me, or you, beat you, you beat me to the pun. Yeah, that he didn't. Yeah, no charisma. Zero. Just nothing. Yeah, just I've seen cardboard nothing. packing foam there, but you know, has a better mm-hmm. conversation with me than him. <laughs> true. It's true. Remember the core? Just you know, bad, bad, bad. It's like that bit in Family Guy. When the um the woodpecker lands on Keanu Reeves' head, is that a woodpecker on your head? Yeah, he comes, he goes. He comes, he That's goes, his yep. personality. Yeah. That was the, that's pretty much what you could explain as Ezekiel Jackson's wrestling career. Uh, yep. No offense, I mean, like I hate to rag on the guy. The guy made it to the WWE. Guy got paid a lot of money, but had his yeah. chance, made a dance, but uh, didn't take yeah, it. Yeah, he. You know, maybe he decided to get the fuck out while, you know, his body he, was still... He, he made his money, and, uh, you know... It's like, he's gonna time to go... do something else. Time to kind of just go fail, you know? And I think they were trying to find time that for because country he reminds music. me... Again, he was like, uh, you know, uh, Monty Brown, Marcus Corvon, just without all the charisma and likability. Athletic ability? That was Yeah, cool. and, um, you know, and I wish Corvon had... He retired because I think it was like a sister or something, and... You know, but yeah, that was. Um, I'm not defending his, you know, wooden personality, but uh, is there a pinch of he wasn't supported from, you know, the roots? If that makes I sense. I just, I just don't think he was a guy that was built for wrestling. I think he was clearly a big, muscular guy that was kind of thrown into yeah. this. Oh, you look, yeah. What, you're oh, you're you like, look, you look, you look yeah. like the part, but yeah. So I therefore, mean, you must be able to act like the part, and then it was like. Yeah, you can, can you, really? And they developed, they, like, you know, they spent all this time trying to develop him. They sent him out there, actually put the yeah. Intercontinental title on him, and then, It you know. just, it was a failed experiment. I mean, maybe not. He was bad. The risk that he did. Oh, my God, he's a test tube wrestler. Fans <laughs> didn't take to him. Exactly, test tube wrestler. Exactly. Yes. It's a perfect, perfect analogy. No charisma, no real skill. Looked uh, at him, 
we can make a project out of you. And we guess have, what? You couldn't. We have the we have the ability. We can teach him. Dusty Rhodes. I have the ability, baby. I can teach him. I can make him competent. Well, apparently, there, there are, you yeah, know, there Ezekiel you Jackson, can you can't teach that. <laughs> Speaking so of, happy birthday, Carmella. Yeah, 28. It's, yeah. it's the birthday show. Apparently. Happy birthday, Carmella. Still looking good at 28. Jesus. Still, Still looking good at 28. Still yeah, welcome good. To get, by Carmella, welcome to get to 40. It all goes downhill. <laughs> Dave, stop being bitter about being 40. Yeah. Be happy. Sorry. Oh, not, my God. Still, you know, I still got my bloody hair, though, so... Speaking I'm of, not, you know... Sorry, like I'm allowed NXT, that tangent. I did post it in the forum. I love watching stuff like that on the network because I can I can skip over all the Susan G. Komen shit and the horrible Eva Marie promo. Oh, Christ. Don't... Look, you know what? I... Out loud. Ugh. Go on, Dave. What were you going to say? I I tasted barl in my mouth for fucking two days. Oh, Christ. Look, I think... It was so fucking forced, it hurt my winky. Look, give the the girl some time, okay? Get get, get used to it. They're not giving up. I will. I will. They're not giving up on it. Just saying, it was... That was all... Come on. I think there may be some time... I hope they realize sooner rather than later they need to cut their losses with her. I don't... You can agree with me on this, right? You know, give her time or not, that was awkward and clumsy. Mm Mm-hmm. I think they're going to give her time with wrestling, and then if it doesn't work out, they'll just be like, all right, well, we're going to make you a manager. I say take her back to the camp and teach her some more fucking skills and then bring her back. Bench her for a couple of months, if you will. Yeah, if you got to use her as, you know, the hot valet for somebody, fine. (laughs) When she she wrestles, it looks like... How's like... Put this it looks like some drunk bird at a pub had her handbag stolen, and she wanted to start a fight. She's no still offense. wrestling. She's I, not really performing yet. But yeah. I, I can't. I can't. Just... You know, I can't do any of this shit. So you know, it's not for me to say. But I just just find a, like I said, the the word for me to say is clumsy. Mm-hmm. Oh, I missed you. Oh. 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 My name's Eva. Yay! I'm, I'm, I'm watching my words though, because as we know, Kate's parents live down the street, so I'm being very polite and kind right now. Yeah, let's, uh, I think I think I think clumsy was a good descriptive term. Just saying. Yes, very clumsy, awkward. Anyway, all right. So let's see. Do we want to get to? Oh, this talk, do we want to talk about some UFC news? Because we had some big UFC news. Yeah. Just... Well, did you see the? Did we talk about the Hogan thinking his, the media coverage made him a sympathetic figure? Yeah, well, brother, whoever's telling you that, brother, you're clearly not not watching the same media coverage as everyone else, brother. <laughs> no, 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 you're a bubble, brother. Brother, <laughs> brother, you got to stop listening to Brian Nobbs telling you, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> oh, it's funny because he's got the word Nobbs in his name. <laughs> Yeah, who, again, I told this story when I went to that indie wrestling show where I live. He was fucking out. He was a fat piece of shit, man. Yep. yep. Oh, God. Did he still, did he, did he at least wear wrestling gear, or do you have, like, gym shorts on? I, I'd have to look at the pictures and shit. Cal- like, Kevin Sullivan got to the, like, I love how there's, like, there's this wrestling documentary of Kevin Sullivan, uh. And uh, I think like he's clearly just like in gym shorts and wrestling boots because you know, I'm, ah, brother, I'm not, cashing in, brother. I'm not wearing tights anymore. I'm too fat and old for this. <laughs> God, I'm too old for this shit. I'm getting, brother. I'm getting too old for this shit. <laughs> Damn it! I was two days anyway, away from retirement. Sorry. Well, enough of the. Uh, let's get to the big UFC shit. Do we want to start with the names being released? All the people that got. I think there was a lot of, I mean, other than Ramsey Ninjin, who was, uh, he won a, who was a tough winner, I think, wasn't he? Or was a... I think there was a few tough enough guys Quite in there. Quite surprised uh, him, by the way, I have to say. Um, uh, you know, actually, no, I'm not surprised by any of it, because WWE, uh, WWE, UFC is cleaning house. Um, they're clearly trying to just trim down, um, definitely more streamlined. There's, there's a, a lot talent, of division. They could have expunged, opposed to him. I still think he was bankable. Just saying. Um. No, nah, I think you know. I think he, the guy's been in the company for so once 
once you fail to get above a certain point, you know, no matter how well you did on on the Ultimate Fighter, which is their signature show, uh, yep. You know, there's just if there's no point in keeping you, and you're not an interesting fighter, and you're losing fights too. Uh, a lot of guys. Uh, yeah, I, don't know. I, I, I still thought he could have turned it around, but that's just me being the optimist for the um, under like the dog bloke. Um, I just think the the, the weight like they they cut a lot of uh, weight to they uh, was it not weight divisions they cut a lot of fighters from the uh, what was it one of the most of it I can't remember right now I think it was one one seventy five we got the most guys cut from it right yeah it was all across the board they they released up to like. Twenty something guys. That was what yeah, it was. And having said updated. that, when I you know I I, I take this. Roughly thirty, they're planning on releasing fifty. Yeah, roughly thirty, plan on fifty. And I, you know, when I take this moral stance and look upon people that, you know, I may be favorable to, I, you know, also, you know, the back of my mind and my hindsight says, well, you're a business. So. Yeah, no, that's and especially they're in a, they're in a sport where you know the turnover in athletes is so quick. You know, guys are. Uh, you know, well, yeah, like you said, form <laughs> up and down of fighters is, is so fluctuating. You can get like a, an absolutely amazing athlete who's very, very talented and just rise through the ranks immediately, like, you know, click fingers, he's there. So, you know, I do understand the fact that they have to, you know, chew the card and cut out some of these older people or the people who aren't necessarily winning fights. But I don't know, I just, I had a soft spot for him. Um, yeah, I mean, he did have a very a favorable, you know, uh, a UF, uh, a favorable, tough uh, season. Um, he was one of the more likable guys on that. I don't remember very. I think he was. Also I guess I. Well, I'm trying to say, but it's wrong to say it because it's not why you should like a fighter. But I, I do invest myself in fighters with how. This sounds stupid, but I think to some degree we all do this, which is how likable their personality is. Yeah, and that's a great way to. to the, the Ultimate Fighter is a great platform to get you know, people invested in... Yeah, but like I said, yeah, you become invested. So it's it's always sad when these people that, you know, you like, you watched, and maybe they were the underdog, and maybe they had good days or not, but, you, you know, you wanted them to stay. But as I said, it's a business, so they need I to think, cut off. I think them. Ramsey Nimjim is still one of these guys that's uh, young enough to to bounce back and find his way back in there. Which is I will say this, even though I don't like it, I think they have a shrewder marketing um uh, campaign or ability than um, WWE has right now. Um, yes, they definitely because they're more of a legitimate sport than WWE. It's, I think, well, yeah, but also I think the fact that because even if they are more le- legitimate sport, at the top of it, they're still a business. But I think they're very much their mindset is cut. Yeah, and I don't necessarily agree with it or like it, but I think the blokes at the top know when to cut their losses. If that makes sense. Yeah, and, and when yeah. no when a fighter is not not bankable and yeah, not, right. and like when, I said, you know, you know I may when be it's time to cut those fighter. losses. Yeah, like I said, I I, know, I may be invested in a fighter, but I can still look at it from their perspective and say, You're right, well, I didn't like that. You know, I I, I thought you still had at yeah. least a year in him, but at the same time, your company, your business, and right. I think we seem to forget that um, with all these sports, you know, like WWE and um, UFC and stuff like that. Um, it's a business at the end of the day. So whether we agree with their decisions or not, they're allowed to make those decisions right. because that's what makes them bankable. Speaking of UFC business decisions that people may or may not agree on, it was a big news that broke just before uh, we started recording today. Yep. The former light heavyweight champion of the world, John Bones Jones, has Bones, been reinstated, yep. has been reinstated by the UFC. Can fight whenever the UFC choose to schedule him in a, in a, yeah. in a fight. Um, yep. So that happened. Uh, I think the, the John Jones road to redemption s- starts now because look, say what you will about ha- what he's done in his personal life over the last year or so, ever since really right. the, the Cormier fight was really kind of like started. You started to see cracks in that public good guy persona. Yep. Where you said that he's probably just, you know, a bit of a cocky asshole, which, you know, when you're a fighter, you're, I think, allowed to have. Um, yeah. But 
Especially if your oh. name is Chael P. Sonnen. And also, isn't that part and parcel of being a fighter? You need that yes, spark. Ab yeah, absolutely. That's, yeah. Ex that's exactly what I meant. Oh. So, I think... You know, John... and Go going on, back Nick. to marketing, you know, UFC can actually, you know, use that when they're building the, this next fight up. You know, if John Jones come out as a cocky, arrogant ass, so people are gonna pay their money to see this guy get his ass kicked. And, and actually, you know what it is. And, I, and if I'm John Jones, and if, or if I'm Joe Silva, the matchmaker for UFC, and I'm not trying to soft book John Jones back into it, I'm making his first fight in the UFC when he's ready. Alexander Gustafsson. That's the fight everybody wants to see. Uh, and yeah, it's not gonna be for the title anymore, but. You know, that's the closest person that has ever come to beating John Jones. Yes. I say what you will about that fight. You know, I think it really could have gone either way that night. Um, yep. I so, remember watching that one. Well, yeah, going was, back on what you yourself and Nick just said, um, and it comes across in any sports, uh, and, you know, we, we all like to boo and dislike someone and hate someone, but isn't that ultimately what makes sport great? Because... Mm -hmm. uh, you like a cocky asshole. You know? Yeah, I mean, you look you, at, you know, you, again, going back to Chell, look how many fights this guy got himself into. Because you need of that bloke who shouts his mouth off yes. and winds up the crowd because... I see, you know, I don't think I don't think this new John Jones is going to be that. You know, that was the old John Jones. This is probably somebody who's been through rehab, so he's probably spouting a whole bunch of other that rehab bullshit. Mm -hmm. or, it, it's going to be true to see where... That they, doesn't necessarily happen. Uh, I think this is coming to somebody who's going to be highly coached to, to spout those things, to, to uh, get better control of his public persona. Because that was, you know, John Jones was this un infallible, you know, UFC golden golden boy. And then, you know, has that interview with, with Daniel Cormier where he gets caught talking shit over the B-roll. Uh, <clears throat> then... You know, the, the cocaine test and then the hit and run. And it was just a really, you know, three pretty damaging PR blows. So and let's not forget, though, e even though, you know, I'm not talking about Hulk Hogan's stance and, you know, like people, you know, assaulting other people. <sighs> it sounds terrible that I'm going to say this, but it's true. We all like someone who's fallen from grace and has to come Absolutely. back. Yeah. And I think John Jones's comeback is something that's kind of written in the stars because his talent even not even and again the cliche but i think you know if what they did is not you know because i'm defending you know crime and shit like that but if what they did was not necessarily that bad i think you know to some degree in any walk of life everyone deserves a second chance a lot of times if you know why where you fucked up they'll give you a second chance yeah and also, when people know that they fucked up, it makes them a better... Not everyone, obviously, but it makes them a better person, and they try to right. stride over the failure that they made, if that makes sense. And I'm not yeah. talking about murderers, rapists, and pedos and shit like that, but I'm talking about, you know, some well, minor... Can I say that right? You know, minor misdemeanor or whatever in their career. But when someone whose heart's in the right place and... Um, they made a genuine fucking mistake, and they're openly apologetic about it. Give them a second chance. Yeah, I say. Yeah, no, I mean, look. Uh, yeah, I, I said go the, same the thing. good PR route. Don't do what you know this fucking farm CEO did. Don't do what Hogan has done. Do it the right way. <laughs> We're gonna have a Martin Screlly reference on on the show, really. Yes. <laughs> I'm not talking about Hogan. I know how we've talked about this before, but like, yeah, Hogan, you dropped the ball on that one massively. So you know, in, enjoy your exile. Martin Screlly looks like that Tobey Maguire meme. Uh, no. I don't know. We are the but, United States of fuck this guy. All right, sorry, anyway. Leslie. I, I have a tangent on this, but it makes sense to what I just said, which is we okay. had a footballer in this country um, who was um, sent to prison no, no, for, the, for four years for rape. And um, he always protested his innocence. And myself and everyone else just went uh, when he came out of prison like oh football club should hire him hire him again there was a big backlash on social media and then um new evidence came out uh and he was cleared and it was just like oops give, yeah give him a second chance he, he did nothing fucking wrong it's, and he missed four years of his career yeah yep yeah um 
So and everyone, and I'm not gonna lie, I was the first person just to like you rape someone. I hope you burn in the fiery pits of but, Hades. But no, but no one died in John Jones's situation. No one was seriously hurt. He basically just got into a car accident and then tried to flee right. the scene. But you know the some, point I'm trying to make. Add yeah. some drugs on you. I know. I'm just trying to get you off Tangent City. Um, Sorry, Leslie. He, Thank you. He 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 fucked Bonnie up. Pine. You know, and he's going to try and do everything he can to try and reclaim his place back in the public glory. Because, again, this was UFC's poster boy for a while. And Oh, yeah, he was, you know, he had only lost one fight, and that was And it was DQ. By, by, yeah, by DQ. And that was on the Lesnar fight, too, if I think, if I wasn't mistaken. Um, it, was, it, was it was a long time ago. I, I remember Hamill seeing fight. it. I remember seeing it. it was, he, had, he did fight on the same card that Lesnar did fight right. on. Yeah, it was a 12 to 6 elbow, as I yeah, remember. Yeah, the 12. Yes, I Remember it well. Remember it well. Um, but, uh, yeah, so this is a guy who's who's definitely going to be poised to, to get his spot back in the company, at least his title back. I don't know if he's ever going to get reach the spot where he was, where he's the face of the company now. I think Ronda has now pretty much secured yeah. herself. I don't, I don't think he will. And the, um, I don't think he will just because... That is that, that even though, you know... He's trying to do the right thing. There will always be that level of negativity attached to him. And and again, Ronda has supplanted him as being the de facto UFC spokesperson. Like when someone wants a UFC, when a company wants a UFC fighter to, to pimp their brand, they go to Ronda Rousey, maybe Conor McGregor or Uriah Faber, or or. Oh, sorry, or yeah, very marketable names. I think John Jones is, is tainted goods. He's not gonna. It's gonna be a long time before he gets those endorsements, or if Again, he ever does. If he ever does, yep. If he ever does, but I just think Ronda has Ronda and Connor have succeeded him and supplanted oh, him as, yeah. as UFC mainstays and spokespeople. <laughs> well, I say hashtag red panty him, night. You know, hashtag red panty night. night. That's one thing you don't hear very much in sports. Um, but I, I like to say, you know, for stuff like this, when someone is generally repentive of what they've done, mm -hmm. and it's not necessarily something horrific and horrible, then, you know, an olive branch is good. Yep. Because how does someone bet themselves apart from yeah, their exactly. mistakes? Exactly, man. Exactly. So, I, and I absolutely believe John Jones has the talent to, to get yes. his. His spot back. I mean, physically speaking, he is just a a, a specimen. Oh, there's no question there's, how good this he's guy the is. fucking boogeyman. I'm pretty sure when I do get scared and I hear creaking in the middle of the night, if uh, I look under my bed, he's fucking there. He it, it is. He has just an, an inhuman reach advantage over anybody else in his weight class or even just in UFC in general. Just yeah, like, I, he, he's got like the longest reach in the fucking UFC, man. Well, they all say that, don't they? Which is, they always talk about when he when he faced people, which is, you know, oh, he's going against this person, he's got this many knockouts, he's got this many knockouts, and then they always go, but... Yeah, but how's he going to hit him? <laughs> yeah, and then, you know, the minute they say, but, they're like, here comes the reach. Yeah, John Jones and, has a... Eight inch. I think he would have had over Cormier one time. He had like an eleven inch reach advantage over Cormier. And I'm pretty great. sure he doesn't even have to use his fucking legs. He can just yeah. slap them around with his hands. Like, it, 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 how can you beat somebody? How can you expect to beat somebody when you can't get within a foot of them and expecting them without them hitting, being able to hit you? Was it was it Muhammad Ali who said that um, you can be the greatest trained boxer in the world, but when someone's um, arms uh, three inches longer than yours, you have to change change your A game. Exactly. And mm -hmm. Something as simple as that is true. Which is yeah, that's always been one of the scariest. Not to the fact you know you add the wrestling into it and the fact that he's got a goddamn one foot reach advantage on most yeah. guys. It's you can guard all you want. You can guard all you want, but when someone can just keep sapping your strength by basically staying out your punching zone. <sighs> You're fucked, sugar tits. No offense, yes. but you're fucked. You know, it's 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 going to be interesting. To, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see if they make him fight his way back to it. I don't think they will. I think you know. Oh he's... no! I, he more than likely there's going to be immediate rematch. I think he's going to. He'll get one I hope match he does. Shot. I really hope he does. 
I think he's going to get, like I said, one match to, to prove himself where he is in the division against Gustafson, because that's a fight that everybody wants to see. And then if he, based on the, that fight, if he beats Gustafson, he will be facing was, Cormier. Was the, oh, his... fuck, I forget his name. Who was the bloke in the mid-90s in UFC? Oh, bollocks, what's his name? Chuck um, Crew cut. Um, and Chuck he Liddell. knew he had a really, really short, he was a really short guy. He was like five foot six, and he knew Chuck he had a really Liddell. short reach. No, Liddell wasn't five six. Um, oh. well, his um, his Are you whole deal Jens was Pulver? his whole yeah. deal was he was um he was a grappler, so he he knew he couldn't outbox them, so he would just let them throw a punch and then just grapple them to the wait, floor. Wait, 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 hold, hold up, early days of UFC. Yeah, what was his name? Bollocks. Tony Gracie, I think it may have been. Yeah, uh, he, he was basically he was the bloke who just waited for someone to throw a jab. Talk about the Gracies. And then he just grab it and flip him and drop him on the floor. Are then the, are just submission hold him. Like, talk about Royce Gracie? Like, the people who invented Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? Not really invented, you know. I can't, honestly, I can't remember his name. All I remember is that when UFC became first big in this country and we couldn't even see it on TV, we had to buy the VHS um, videotapes. There was this bloke who knew, and the, the commentator said it, which is, he's got, he's got a reach like me. I mean, I just, I can barely reach with my fucking remote control. It's an effort. I mean, and yeah, this guy was always, he just he just caught arms and then he just grappled. But not yeah, just grappled, like, and it was, like said, it was Brazilian. Yeah, you're talking about Gracie. Yeah, you're um, talking about Hoist Gracie, the... The godfather. Yes. Um, that's, so that's, he was one of the reasons that made those early UFCs so... Popular because you had this guy that was beating guys that were literally twice his fucking size. Yeah, and his height, and his reach. Yeah, and he is bringing these guys down. He's choking them the fuck out, you know. And all my mates said at the time when um we we first started watching this um on VHS because it wasn't on TV. Sorry, I'm trying to discreetly put out a windy pops. Hmm. There we go. And my mates went, that's cheating, that's cheating. That's not cheating. It's UFC. It's everything, you know. Uh, wrestling is part arts. of UFC. So you oh, can't yeah. sit there and just go, oh, this guy was trying to box him and kick him and he grabbed him and he put him in chokehold. Exactly. That's well, not fair. Well, like, let's so how's that not fair? Wrestling. That's the fucking sport, you dumbass. Yeah, especially when it really evolved from that. You know, it went from Plus, the also, I really boxer liked it against a wrestler to... He was well. He I wasn't heard. a small guy if you compare him to us. But compared to some of the other fighters, even though he was built mm -hmm. like a brick shit house, he was a small guy who the odds were stacked against him. But he used it for him, if it makes sense, and that was brilliant. Very much to some degree, and I don't want to sound like I'm making some really stupid statement, but um, he always reminded me of Bruce Lee in the sense, which is if you can't overcome your opponent's. Um, defense against you work with it and that's what he did i grab you down to the floor scissor kick around your head night night sugar tits night night yep it's like the fifth time you've said sugar tits <laughs> yeah i noticed that too it's like it's like dave's gimmick of the week all right speaking going back into wrestling we had a gorgeous absolutely gorgeous debut this week or uh, do we want to talk about the heat on rusev yeah, let's do the heat on Rusev and just how hypocritical it is at WWE, you know? Look, I mean, I don't see, I don't have a problem with them getting mad at him because I'm sure they, they teach these guys to be aware of, the, of their social media and, you know, be aware yeah. that, you know, what they do in their personal life is being subjected. And there are still people that believe that it is real. Uh, uh, so for them to, you know, do this and then have it come out it's not their fault, but someone's got to take the blame. So I don't yeah. think it's going to affect his career. Everyone needs badly. a full guy. Exactly. I don't well, think they're going to bury Rusev because he's oh, not no. on it. But I think when Lana comes back, she'll be relegated just to being hit for his valet. And, you know, they might not push her as quite as much as they were probably planning to a few months right. ago. I don't know how far these plans went. I'm not saying they had Lana T-shirts and Lana earrings. I don't. And even, I think they had kind of been ramping down on pushing her anyway. Yeah. And this just is gonna like. This is. Now really this not. just pretty much automatically relegates her to, to the Elizabeth exactly. role. And 
I hope, you know what I'm saying? If they get married, and, and I really hope they're going forward with this whole European uh, group story. Right. I would love to see a Rusev Lana wedding. Um, on a, because it's very so often that you see two heels get married and then the face interrupting. So I'd like to, I'd like to, I'd yeah. like to see that. I thought that, I think that'd be good TV. Mm-hmm. Good TV. But again, I think any back, any heat that he has, quote unquote, backstage is probably just with writers being mad at him. Because I don't think the guy, any, any of them, you know, his peers are mad at him. I don't think people exactly. take kayfabe that seriously <laughs> anymore. I just think it's kind of the writers just being like, oh, now we have to come up with something different. We had exactly. yeah, that's all. TV written out. This whole creative, this was this whole out plan is now ruined because of TMZ and we guys decided to get married. Bah. Which is fa- like that's fair. fair. I by can way, understand. By the way, if you want to look at someone's who has like the most boringest Instagram account ever of all the WWE superstars, Rusev's Instagram account. <laughs> he follows like 14 accounts only three of them are people Lana Barrett and uh, Rikishi Rikishi yes how did I fucking forget that one uh, why is there an echo by the way sorry I might turn my volume up a little bit um, and then it's like the NBA the Clippers and then a bunch of sports cars yeah supercars yeah um but like his pictures. No, no, like, no. That's not not supercars. Me at the beach. Me at a Lakers game. <laughs> like everybody else's character, everybody else's Instagram feed and stuff like that is like highly kayfabe. It's like you know, mm-hmm. promoting whatever nutrients or supplements <laughs> or whatever they take or or you know doing that kind of stuff. Yep. Doing promotional things for WWE. Rusev is just like he has his real name on it. <laughs> yep. Like, yeah. Don't try and get me to fucking pronounce it either. Miroslav. Blah, 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 blah. Whatever. I don't know how they get Rusev from that too, because usually like they just take it and then just going. Yeah. Uh, Russian. Russian. Ru. Rusev. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag Vince McMahon voice. Das wird dann ja, bitch. <laughs> yes. If if he dies, he dies. That's I don't know. Rusev. It sounds Russian. Go with it. Go with it. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna kill him. I got an idea already. We're gonna bring you out on a. T- Why didn't they give him tights that are like fucking Dragos from Rocky IV? That would be uh, amazing. Kind of, kind of did. I mean, yeah, a little bit. The, like with the. No the enough. Red. Not enough. No, they're not like the red and stuff like that. But. I don't mind fucking gold tights with. Sorry, red tights with gold stripes down the outside. Yeah. And if he dies, he dies across his the ass on the back. Yeah, kudos for that. That's pretty badass as far as entrances go. Um, but yeah, Rusev's Instagram account, most boring thing in the world. Um, so we did have a very gorgeous debut this oh, week. Oh, yes. Um, because we saw the reports that he had been, this man had been quietly moved up to the main roster, and it's like, you know, these guys, they do dark matches all the time. I mean, you know, Samoa Joe, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, like I said, I won't believe it until we actually see him come out. Well... During a Miz TV segment, most, it happened. <laughs> most gorgeous segment of Miz TV ever, too. By yes, the way. and it's like they have fucking got well, like like acting like they don't know who this guy is, and it's like really you you have your announcers admitting they don't watch their own fucking product. <laughs> Did they but, really? They really just they have like no like no acknowledgement of who this guy is. I don't like, know. What? And it did bang. Is- Out it goes. Yep. That's see I really almost wish they did kind of do a build for him. Like I would again like I loved what have seen like the obsession by Tyler Breeze. Yes. yes. I really like that. That's idea. what they you know, they blew their load on a Miz T V segment on SmackDown, alright? Ugh, but yes, Tyler Breeze. Mm, gorgeous. That brings us to another thing. Now that Tyler Breeze is coming up into the main roster. Uh the venerable Jim Ross, I think we can call Jim Ross venerable at this point. Uh, says that if WWE wanted to, now would be the perfect time to look into brand extension. And I could not, and I don't think I have ever agreed with good old JR any more than I do at this point in time. The roster, main roster, has reached a point where it's bloated. And Exactly. 
Yeah. And it wasn't at that point when they did away with the brand extension. When, the, when they had the brand right. extension. Right, it was, was very thin. Exactly. You had your few top guys and, you know, there were both shows, but it's like, ugh. You had everybody else that was stuck on SmackDown was, you know, curtain jerking, jobbing. Right. Yes. And anybody who was a top, top, top guy worked both shows. Yeah. Uh, now it's becoming a little bit different. Now you're having guys that realistically could carry shows on their own just on the basis of the interest, especially based on the interest and the success of NXT. Bring a lot of these NXT guys up together. They'll fill up some fill up some buildings, guaranteed. Um, oh hell yeah! Especially Tyler if you, Breeze, you know, I think is one of those names. Yes, especially you know, also you know Samoa Joe, Finn Balor, Kevin Owens, blah 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 blah. There's a lot of these guys that can do that. Well, Kevin Owens is already doing that. I think Kevin Owens is yes. not an old champion. Uh, I think he's I doing just, that by now. Yeah, I, I mean, I just threw that name out there, but yes. you know, any you know from a Tommy, you know, you name it. There's a lot of these guys that you can basically build you know a show around yeah or it could or or it could certainly add to a show maybe not build a yes. show around like i'm not saying put tyler breeze on the world heavyweight title but put him on him put him somewhere on your roster as one of your heels and he's you know a top three heel in your company by far and he's one of those people that his gimmick gets over with the older set of your fans yes that that cheer for the heels the so, only time a selfie stick is awesome. The only time that you should ever use a selfie stick. <laughs> yes. I was going to post that on Facebook, and I, I, and I'm not doing it, and like, well, fuck it, do it on Slack. Because you ref- you'd have to reference what a selfie stick is. And yes. I thought I even have to know what that word is in this day and age. Yeah. It sickens me. Uh, a selfie stick sounds like you're masturbating. Sorry. It does. It really does. Um, but again, it, it, it now kind is of the like time. you're an art. What did you say? Never mind. Okay. I said there's kind of a parallel to that. Um, yeah. So, like, now is the time if WWE were so behooved. I'm not saying they will, but I just think it's a really good uh, point made by Jim Ross, who seems to know what he's talking about, uh, is a yep. a trusted source of, of, of wrestling wisdom. Um. And I think a lot of I think it is probably the best way to get over a lot of these guys to when they're coming up from the main roster uh, to have two separate but equal shows. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if we're ever going to see that. I think the WWE has maybe moved past the brand extension thing. Right. But I mean, it's feasible. It's not something. It's not outside the realm of possibility. They have done it before, and. If they wanted to shake ratings up, quote unquote, what better way to do it having a WWE draft episode? I mean, those episodes of Raw were always quality for me. Oh yeah, the very first but, one when uh, no, not the first right one. Now, so. Well, I was gonna say I remember the one in '04 where Edge came back and he just came in, speared the shit out of Eric Bischoff. Yeah, just. Which I will reference that later when we talk about Hell in the Cell. But yes, speaking of Bischoff get... specifically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so who knows if that's actually going to become a thing? I, I would, would think it would be a bad idea, and I'd actually welcome it. And if they announced it next week, I'd, I'd watch that episode of Raw. Well, yeah. I mean, think about it. NXT; it's its own separate brand at this point. Yes. Um, yeah. That I, I frequently think... outshines the main roster. Um. Yeah. Sorry, you're going to say something, Liz. Oh no, just. I thought they kind of stopped bringing up people for a while because they do have a lot of people in the main roster and they do have NXT. Well, yeah, in the last couple of months, you know, they brought up Charlotte and Sasha and Becky and we had Kevin Owens. Now we've got Tyler Breeze. You had Neville, the Lucha Dragons. Neville, Lucha Dragons, The Ascension. Yeah, that's worked out really. Yeah, I randomly turn on an episode of fucking the Superstars or main event. They're still jobbing. Well, the Ascension came before WrestleMania, but since oh. WrestleMania, you had all those people come up. Oh yeah, that's right. It was before WrestleMania. Cause... So do you think you don't think there's going to be any more people? I think you're trying to think Tyler Breeze was the last of them that was. I thought they for a I while. Honestly, I didn't think they were going to bring up Tyler Breeze. I was kind of surprised I, that they I did. Wasn't. I, I really cause... thought that after um, 
Kevin Owens and and the three girls, with the exception of maybe Bailey at some point, maybe Tyler Breeze like at some point. Like I really, I I think it's got to no, be. It. I think I think the reaction that he got in Brooklyn was was clearly ready that this guy is ready to be. Yeah. You know. Yep. I mean, like beyond like those were the two like Bailey and Tyler Breeze. Like okay, maybe they'll bring them up, but then that's like it has to be it at some point. No, I, th- I thought it was it was now or never with Tyler Breeze. Um, right, right. Yeah, so he's done about, everything right. he could. I mean, short of winning the NXT title, which no, he was I'm not, not going to do. No, I'm not saying they shouldn't have brought up Tyler Breeze. I'm saying like there has to be a limit on how many more people they can bring up. I, I think I think Tyler Breeze might be it because I really don't think anybody yeah, else that's is, that, I, is that. We're ready saying the same thing in different ways. I agree. With that. Right. Right, because look, or how? Because then you're really gonna fu- uh, screw up your NXT roster because. Look, you got Bailey carrying the, the women's title right too, now. The turnover would be too quickly. You'd right. Be, um, guys would be coming up. Right. And then going out so fast that NXT's fans, with their heads would be spinning. They wouldn't. Right. And, you more. know, and there would just be guys getting, you know, freaking just nothing that were doing everything on NXT. You know, if you all of a sudden, you know, brought up uh, Finn Balor and then he's, you know, being all of a sudden buried because there's not room for them, you know, or what are not even being used. What was the point? No, absolutely. So maybe brand extension. <coughs> I'm sure it's been discussed somewhere deep down in the halls. I, I yeah. Just, it's time. I think it's, you know, something that should be looked into seriously. Mm-hmm. Very much. If, if I'm, if I'm booking, I'm, I, I'm suggesting that at some meetings. Or, you know, not even really do it as like a, well, in a sense, you know, you only have these guys, you know, because how it used to be, because I remember when the brand extension first started, these rosters were separate. You didn't see a Brock Lesnar after he went to SmackDown. Exactly, have two separate branches of the So when they did do, you know, when they did have the cross pay-per-views, you know, a lot of those matches actually felt, you know, special when... You know, they were like Raw would build up to their world title match over the course of six to eight weeks. You know, mm-hmm. you and then when they had the big, you know, Raw versus SmackDown matches, because I remember the one in 05, the Team Raw versus Team SmackDown, when you had the they all came on the entire all the rosters were cheering them on. You know, like on the Raw side, you had the heartthrobs on the SmackDown side. You had the dicks, you know, the shitty tag team invasion of 05, as I call it. But it, that match, you know, that was, you know, felt special. You know, you had things like that. And then it just, after so many years, it just became like, eh, hey, that's, you know, Cody Rhodes from SmackDown. What's he doing here? Well, you, you haven't even kept the roster separate in three fucking years, guys. Well, yeah, no, it, it, I think, though, I think because now with the, with the influx of new talents, mm-hmm. Maybe it's the time to do that. Jim Ross might be right. What was that, Lizzie? Lizzie, you, you, uh, you, you had something to say, yeah? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I was done. Oh, okay. I, I, I moved. Okay. That and, I, think, yeah. I think we're done with this topic. Let's move on to the main event of the evening. Uh, that's our Hell in the Cell predictions, previews, yes. rundown, happy, happy, fun, good time. Ah, uh, uh, yes. If first off, they need to really end these fucking theme pay-per-views like this. Yeah, I do miss I do miss the, the Halcyon days of the, you know, what was the October pay-per-view used to be always, like, Bad Blood or... Um, no, it was like, yeah, and like... Unforgiven. Early, Unforgiven, you know, or no, No Mercy, you had Unforgiven, you had... No, Unforgiven was fucking September. Was it? I don't remember. I, I was, like, I don't even remember. You know, you had Judgment Day. You had No just, Way Out. Just these great pay-per-view names. Now it's Hell in a Cell. And so and now when you when they would do a Hell in a Cell match, you know, it actually felt like, fuck. Yeah, now it's this, just a Hell in a Cell. It's October, you know. Now we got to have a Cell match. Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. It's October. And you realize, oh, wait, year. we need a Steel Cell. It's Especially fun. now this year because the way they just totally – you know, gave us no build up for Lesnar Undertaker. It was just like, oh nope, we're gonna give that to you in Hell in a Cell. Yeah. Yeah. That happened. We're doing this. Enjoy. Yeah, you know, and you know, it just felt like there's no build it was just during a random, you know, pay per view fucking It was commercial. the first commercial break of the pay per view. It's like Brock Lesnar's go to hell to her. <laughs> Kansas you know, City Royals beat the Toronto Blue Jays. And that's the ALCS. 
Yeah, well, Back Walter. to the Future didn't even get the Cubs right. Fuck, guys. Anyway. So, yeah, but I mean, were there, oh, there were some duds with these same pay-per-views. You remember Fatal 4-Way? Oh, well, believe me, a lot of the pay. Remember there was one there was this they were breaking point where like every match had to be decided by submission. Breaking or points. You no, know, there it was a submission theme pay per view. You had bragging rights, which was Raw vs SmackDown 2.0 and failed. You know we've had TLC, because again when you actually saw one of these matches, it felt special. You know 06 when you had the build up to. You know, DX versus the McMahons in the cell. That was the blow off, you know? Yeah, you And Big Show just, getting kicked in the balls. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just, and the billionaire butt the, plug. It's that time of the year. It's October. We know we're going to see a Hell in the Cell match. I yes. get what you're saying. It's December. You know, we're going to see tables, ladders, and chairs. We're going to see a ladder match. We're going to see a tables match. We're going to see a fucking chairs match. Oh, God. I hope we don't. We'll even see a stairs match. Oh, please. I'll, I'll take a fucking steal. Actually, screw them both. Remember, remember they did? Remember they did? They even added, like, they switched tables, ladders, chairs, and, and stairs. stairs. Next God. year, is it's going to be tables, ladders, chairs, stairs, and bears. God damn it. I knew you were going to say that. Tails, ladders, chairs, stairs, bears, and oh, wait, there's gotta be something else I could put on the end of this. Make this joke go somewhere. Shit, I lost it. And washing machines. I don't know. I'm just no. gonna pull something <laughs> right out of my ass, which is our usual booking. But anyway. Tables, ladders, chairs, stairs, bears, and pears. <laughs> a pears match. Yes, you just have on a pole for Vince Russo, who <laughs> was. Apparently trying to get in contact with Vince McMahon for a job. Who? Really? <laughs> Did we talk about this last week? No. Oh, wait, you're serious. Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> was, did, did he call or did his mother call for him? That was, that's, that's the thing I wanted to know. I'm pretty sure we talked about this last week. Cause it could have I don't think we did. did. Oh, we did? Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure I made that joke last week. No, that was about Buff Bagwell. It wasn't oh. about Russo. Oh. That's right. Sorry. Yep. <laughs> WWE Hell in a Cell brought to you by WWE 2K16, which... <laughs> it it kind of seems self-redundant, kind of. Like, you know, brought to you by ourselves. Yes. Brought to you by On... this thing that we're trying to... Buy, buy this thing that we're trying to sell for 99 Brought to you by this thing that we're trying to sell you for fifty nine ninety nine. Yes, pretty much. But... Yeah, I um, want to just go from the bottom of the card up. Because... Starting from the bottom and the top. Let's go from the top. Because, I, like, I mean, I haven't really watched much much Raw this week. I've been one of the people right. that has tuned out. So I don't really have to say much to say about the build. I'm just going to go. So we have the pre-show, because we got these guys on the pay-per-view match. Ziggler, Cesaro, and Neville against Rusev, Sheamus, and Barrett. I think, I, again, I like this European Union kind of mm -hmm. gimmick. That's what I'm going to call them until they, until they come up with a crappy name. But that's what it is. It's a gimmick. This fight. Yeah. Um, it's um, a bunch I, of guys because we got to get him on the pay-per-view because we, we're still trying to make Cesaro grab that brass ring. You know, Dolph Ziggler is going to bump like a motherfucker, and Neville's going to do some spectacular shit. We're gonna, it's called Team High Spots against uh, Team Spot Monkey against uh, <laughs> Team European Union. Um, yeah. I think That's... Team European Union is going to need someone to squash on their on their way to... It's called Team Cleverly Planned yeah. to milk the um, pay-per-view people out of their pockets. Something like that. Yep. Um, yeah, I think just think this team needs someone to, to steamroll over. And, mm -hmm. and that's what team, this is. And team so. no creative. Uh, cre team creative has nothing for you guys yes. right now. Uh, it's just that. Yeah, because we have nothing for you. So here, we'll get you a spot on the on the show. and You get paid. You get to work around. You know, you're not wrestling catering. You're all good. <laughs> yes, you're not Zack Ryder. <laughs> You're not Zack Ryder. I think that it might be the other uh, Neville, Cesaro, and Ziggler. Could be. I'm calling you European Union because they've had no problem beating Ziggler before. And they'll have no pro or Cesaro before. You know, at least this time he didn't make a comment how people are getting sick of Cena versus Orton. And then he loses two straight falls in that two out of three falls match. <laughs> and then would lose like 27 straight times after. But it's going to be, you know, European Union. So, yeah, until they find some crappy, ridiculous name for them. Uh, we're going to call them that until they, they start calling it. Or uh, European Union. What do they call Remember the uh, United Kingdom? 
gimmick in uh, SmackDown vs. Raw a couple oh, years ago. Fuck. It was Wade Barrett, Sheamus, Stephen Regal, and there was it might have been somebody else. Sorry, William Regal. The um, Union. Um... They, they were called. They were called the United Kingdom. That's what they were. It was all British guys. It was ah. McIntyre, Drew McIntyre, Sheamus, uh, Wade Barrett, mm-hmm. and William Regal. Yep. Yeah. This is what right. reminds me of. So. Um, I'm going to bounce around and kind of think of how we got the, kind of where we get the marquee matches on top here, but let's start with the tag titles, playa. <laughs> oh, it's a new day. Yes, it is. Oh. I don't even know who they're, I don't even know who they're, know or care who they're facing. I'm just going. The Dudleys. Yeah. Dudley Poison. I think oh. the new. The damn Dudleys. Oh, it's those damn Dudleys. Hashtag yep. save the tables. Um, yeah, the new day. I mean, until the new day is not the hottest thing. In, in wrestling. Yeah, I, I, you know, and again, you could get one more screwball finish out of this and do the title change in Survivor Series. You don't even need to do this. You don't even need to do the title change. I think. I think the New Day just mm-hmm. is perfect TV. Yeah. Um. I. I'm gonna say the Dudleys. I. I don't know. I just have this hunch that they're gonna win the titles. You know, they did just put you know poor Xavier. Through a goddamn table. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm saying Dudley's, but I'm not even so fucking sure. So, I like this, because so far Dick and I are picking opposite answers. That's so, usually how it works. You're going yeah, to I know. New day. I know. Dave, what do you got there for us? I would make. Okay, so we got two. I don't want to be, this. but... This is good. Yeah, they're going to do it. All right, All right, so Intercontinental title, Kevin Owens versus Ryback. Owens, for me, right off the bat. Yeah, no, I think this is going to be a clean sweep. I, I think yeah, we win, have, Owens, we win. win. I, I, I'm going to call it I'm gonna call it in three rounds, I reckon. Uh, you're going to you're gonna have, you have yet to see the best of Kevin Owens' Intercontinental title reign. I oh no! <laughs> oh, we haven't. Him, him he's gonna. Sw- I'm, I'm telling you, so. he's gonna. He's gonna fucking sweep him. It's that simple. Yeah. Him yelling at at Jay Uso is is not even the funniest thing you have to see him do. Oh God, yes. And we didn't even like, bring that I up, and then I named the episode country, that. We're not allowed to bet on WWE in this country, but if I could bet on it, my fucking. 25 quid is on fucking Owens. He's going to he's gonna sweep me. I'd be... Right, you're allowed... Dare I say this? You're allowed to play Rosambeau with me if I lose this bet. Oh, fuck. But just, just kick softly. Um, I'm telling you, Owens. Yep. You know, I, I, I'm totally in agreement. I think that's going to be yeah. a clean sweep across the board. Yeah. I mean, he did just pop up Powerbomb it's Mark Henry, it's too. It's a, it's so. a fucking better wrestler. Well, it's not that. It's, you know, the fact that they've and gotten got all... It's the fact they've gotten all they could out of the Ryback Intercontinental title run. Yeah. I mean, you know? I think they've gotten out almost all they can out of well, Ryback. I'm, yeah, I'm there's no reason to put like the title an, an back on them. Like, I, I'd say Owens because he's a better wrestler. He's got better ability, better talent, um, better move list. Um, all right, granted, that sounds like I'm talking about a PlayStation game. But also... <laughs> He's got he he's got better stamina. How many times have you seen him pull something amazing out of his ass at the last minute? Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, he's gonna fucking trounce this. Yeah. In fact, um, Williams betting bookies down the road from me. Why won't you let me bet on this? Because quite frankly, it's an easy hundred quid if I drop down twenty five pounds. In fact, I'm annoyed at you more. In fact, Owens, go and kick the shit out of them. I'm pissed off now. Yes. Yep. Pop up power bomb these motherfuckers. But anyway, so we got what. We well, should we call the length though? Let's make it interesting. Should we call the length of that fight? Um, I think it's. I mean, I don't. They're, they'll get the standard ten minutes. I give them it's probably about eight to thirteen. Yeah. Like. I give it five. Like, you script how long it is. It, it, I Seriously, I, I give it. I give it five. 
I, I, I mean, I think I, there might be a shock halfway through where he gets stunned or something, and he wobbles around for a little bit. And, you know, everyone goes, oh, he's going to lose. And then he's just going to fucking turn into fucking Rocky Balboa, and I think he's going to trounce you realize this is not UFC. Like, you're talking like you're, I think you're more thinking that, like, it's UFC there, homie. Yeah. Yeah, That's... you're good. Uh, I'm trying to follow you, but. Yeah, I've never no. seen Owens. No, no, trust me. I'm what I'm saying. I'm not talking about UFC. I'm thinking, you know, there there will be a shock halfway where you through. Think, where you think keep, Ryback is going to win? And just in yeah, five minutes, just to keep just the crowd think. invested and interested in the fight. Right. But, no, I don't. That's not UFC. That's me talking about how to stage manage a good fight. Yeah, how they're gonna? Yeah, there's gonna be a point where they think, and then Ro- Owens is gonna. Bing, bang, boom, pop up, powerbomb, one, right. two, three. Gonna, you can call me on this. He's going to come out, right? He's going to trounce him for a couple of minutes, and everyone's just being like, oh, my God, oh, my God, this is amazing, this is amazing. And then he'll take a couple of shots, and he'll be stunned. And, and I mean really stunned, you know, wary on his legs and stuff. And yeah. we think, oh, fuck, 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 he's going down, he's going down. And then he'll just suck up Rocky Balboa and just fucking go forward, and game over, boom, job's a good one. Job done. Right, I understand so, what you're saying. But yeah, so basically, basically Sorry, Widow wins. Win. I didn't mean to sound like UFC because that's not what I was saying. I'm just saying. I'm talking about you know the the battle. Oh, I know what you're saying. Again, win Owens win. And also Owens, have a word with um, Williams because ugh, it's not fair that I can't bet on you because if I could bet on you, I'm, it's an easy hundred quid. It's not fair. I'm telling you. If you want to bet on can you bet on, can you bet on wrestling in the states, by the way. No, you, you can't bet on anything in the states legally. Oh, that's not fucking fair. Um, if you, I'm telling you, if you do, want to. Do bet you know where my local bookies is downtown? And this really makes us sound in the UK like absolute assholes. Uh, <laughs> my local bookies is over the road from a primary school. Tangent City. Yes. Yep. Take me down to the tangent city. Where That's actually right. Don't make any sense. Because I'm talking talk- <laughs> betting. Oh, won't you please take me home? Okay, let's oh, get to yeah. the next fucking match before. Oh, uh, shut let's up. See. Puff. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, let's go to let's Charlotte do a cough. versus Seriously, Nikki. you really need to get some cough medicine. Sorry, just saying, I care about you. I was laughing. Diva's title, Charlotte Nikki Bella. Do I, do I have Nikki. to do a prediction on this? Charlotte, I'm taking... There's no reason to put I'm the taking, belt no, back on no, 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 no. I'm taking Nikki because I think it's about time. Oh, hell. Oh, no, 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 no. They would be fucking stupid. I mean, Nikki sudden, by disqualification, maybe, but I don't... Yeah, I right. Yeah, but can you imagine how good it would be if she does it? And then they can do there the immediate take falling, the title literally. off her and then go, you know, to classic WWE and just, which is, you know, she beats, she wins, and then you lose it a week later. But the shock factor would be amazing. I would, actually, you know what it would be? That would be a very Ric Flair move. Because Ric Flair did this basically the same thing to the Texas Tornado with the NWA World Heavyweight title. Like, right, you can, laugh at me. you can laugh at me after this doesn't happen, but I will say this, it's not... Now I'm thinking, dig up, stupid. But yeah. I'm not saying. I'm. I'm. I'm just saying it's not completely off the cards, if that makes sense. Uh, I, I, yeah, but there, I think John shock Cena's factor. Going people, away, shock I factor. Think, think about it. Their views and shit well, right now. Shock factor. And not in a good way. But well, you got Becky Lynch at ringside for Charlotte, and then you have Bree and Alicia for Nikki. So there's Plus, gonna be a schmoz in I here somewhere. Her, I want to bone away, but I have a soft spot for her because I really like her wrestling style. Sorry. I can see I can see Paige coming in at some point and purposely Oh please Paige come in. Sorry. That wasn't creepy see, by know, the way. Paige at some point is gonna get involved. There's gonna be a schmoz outside There's gonna be with a the other slap ones. Down, one, two, and then she's gonna jump in, count and And then all of a sudden we're gonna get boom, figure eight. Nikki's yeah. gonna tap, and then because hey, I'll openly, I'll openly admit, right? If I get this wrong, you can all laugh at me. You can all, you know, make me a pariah. But I'm just saying, possibly with the viewership thing going on right now, it's on the cards. If you see what I mean, a shock is as good as a rest. If that makes sense. Well, anyway, uh, let's see. Let's go to let's go to Roman Reigns, Bray uh, White, Hell in a Cell. Roman gonna look real strong. 
Roman. That's the whole point of this. That's the whole point of this feud. I think is to look Roman look strong. And yep. Look so great, Roman's getting the win. Scary. He's uh, getting yeah. the win because they built this feud up for so long. They didn't build it up for nothing. I, I, also, to... I also think this is going to be one of these matches where they're going to have to like, you know, put the governor on on these two guys because if they would like. If Mick Foley and Undertaker didn't set the standard already, these two guys would throw each other off the cage if they if they would allow. Them. Oh, it's going to be a good fight. It's going to be a good fight. It would fight. be Bray Wyatt. Bray fight. Wyatt would absolutely take that. He's like, I could take that bump. Oh yeah, I'll take it. Throw himself off the cage. So we'll see some things that will be insane. Uh, and be some... I'm pretty sure there'll be a chair involved somewhere. Oh, there's sure. going to be weapons involved. This is going to be a fucking fight. There, you these know? guys are. These guys yeah. are going to. But yeah, they're gonna have to put the governor on these guys because yeah. we saw the as we, as we like to year. say in the UK, this is a fight we like to call when everything goes out the window and there's no rules. Tails to the wind, my friend. Tails to the wind. It will certainly be that. All right. Um, and I call Roman. Sorry. Yep, Roman's gonna look real fucking strong. So before we get to the two main event, we got the John Cena Open Challenge. We don't know who he's facing. Don't ask me to comment on Cena. We don't know who he's facing, but Facebook, on their trending thing on the side there, said John Cena will be coming back in December to defend his U.S. title against Sheamus. So... Ba, ba, da, ba. Cena wins, <laughs> LOL. I am, yes. I am divided. I am Whoever divided. it is, against, against X... Cena wins, LOL. Yes, it's going to be, you know, you could put him up against fucking goddamn Vegeta. He does the Big Bang. You could put him up against fucking Drago. Guess what? Cena wins, LOL. It's the status quo. Well, see, when I say I'm in two minds, I just, obviously, initially, I should call that Cena wins. But part of me, again, comes back to the ratings, which is, mm. will they, you know, allow something to move it forward? And let the opposition, who we don't know who is, gonna win. So, so uh, I'm kind of, seeing... I, I, I'm calling Cena, but at the same time, um, because of you know the situation of the company right now, even though obviously they're not with destitute and stuff like that, um, and we don't know who the opponent is. Now, I'm gonna say there's like one incy bincy one tenth of a chance that the opponent might win. Well, and here's the thing. With Facebook launching this, I was going to bring up about Bischoff earlier. Because I remember the promo where Edge had gotten hurt. He was Intercontinental Champion. And he mentioned, you know, Eric Bischoff, you know, institutes that 30-day rule. Because, you know, whenever the hell he wants to. They've been, they've played fast and loose with this, you know, 30-day defense rule for years. You know, I... It's, it's, it's like, it's in the same way that Jack Tunney was president of the WWE. Yes, you know what the really it's, sca- it, it's, sad thing is? Um, I have a John Cena sticker. Um, I have a John Cena sticker all over the bottom of my laptop. Um, and, you know, the C Nation sticker. And the fact that I said he might lose, I can clearly see his eyes staring into me. It's like, fuck you, Wadey. <laughs> Who side are you on? You don't have hustle, loyalty, and respect? By the way, I saw one of those son. shirts. And I went into a, my Hot Topic in the mall. I was just looking at shirts. And they had, like, a Seth Rollins shirt. I was trying to find one at least 2XL, but I couldn't. But I saw a Cena one, and I saw Hogan yeah, ones. I'm like, welcome. wow. No one's really rushed out to buy these Hogan ones, but... Does the Hona, uh, the, sorry, the, um, the, the Hogan one on the back say, I'm a massive racist? No. I'd make one of those, though. But anyway, yeah, it just seems like with... Because I, I was seeing reports that, oh, they want, they may have Daniel Bryan come back as a surprise. I don't think it's a foregone conclusion is what I'm well, saying. Well, yeah. I mean, because they have to retire Cena at some point, right? But they? I mean, we know Cena's going to be gone for a while, and it seems like they're trying to, with Facebook saying that oh, Sheamus is going to be facing Cena for the title in two months. You know, you wonder if this is going to be oh, it's going to be the open challenge. But then here comes Sheamus. He proceeds to beat the living shit out of Cena. He does a stretcher job, and he's gone for two months. Which I know is a stretch, but I think that'd be a shameful thing. Lobster head. <laughs> I think that would be a shame. But don't we think that WWE right now, at some point, would think that possibly they need to stop kissing the ass of Cena? No, I just think Cena's shtick works. 
you know, sells merchandise. I'm not merchandise. saying he's a great wrestler. I'm not saying he's got the, the tools and everything, but I personally think that um, WWE just giving that advantage over everyone else, and it's not fair. Well, yeah, I mean, because I was seeing reports that, oh, they, may, they want Daniel Bryan to come back. You know, I've seen posts where people want, you know, Tyler Breeze, James Storm. I saw at one point, you know, Sami Zayn make his surprise return debut on big actually get a match not turn I like Cena entrance. I love and adore Cena but I will say this um you know you can all hate me but I think it would be good for WWE if he you know maybe it's tight maybe it's really close maybe it's the Rocky 3 ending but it would be good for them you know if he lost yeah oh, yeah well no I believe that too because that it won't hurt him one TV fucking for- iota yeah, no. but also because the fact that they've... A, I'm not saying he's not a great wrestler. I'm really not saying that. But they've they've sugarcoated him for so long, it's really starting to get on my tits. Well, yeah. Well, that, he can lose every match for the rest of his fucking career. It's not going to hurt him one bit. He's still going to kick out a two. By the way, John Cena, I still love you. I have your, you know, um, plastic sticker over my laptop, so don't hit me in the face when I say this. But, yeah, I think it's about time that you ate humble pie. I think, here's what I'm saying. I think by obviously announcing that, they pretty much gave away the ending of this match. Up until, which sucks for me, because up until two weeks ago, I was a big proponent of Leslie's Give Kofi Kingston the uh, U.S. title yeah. movement. I mean, so, and if you wanted to just, you know, because there's nothing left for Sammy on NXT, you know, you have him come up as a, you know, surprise for the open challenge, and he beats Cena for the title. And then right I just show up, I beat people up, I fuck off, and I take my paycheck. That's how I feel about Cena right now. Yeah. And, you know, and then you, all of a sudden you have Owens come out, stare down, or maybe he comes in pop-up power, whatever. And you, or has his match right after that. Something like that. And you could do this build to a unification match at WrestleMania if you don't want to make a Sammy a surprise okay. enter in the Rumble, which Fan- I... Fantasy booking to the max right now, bro. It is, but... I know, but it seems like with unless you know WWE wants to pull the old switcheroo and you know if this gets now that it's done it before, they've done it before. They have, so they could easily pull the switcheroo and you know Cena's gonna be gone for two months. Uh, yeah, I just I, 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 I'm, as much as like the Facebook thing, I want to trust it. I just I can't believe they're gonna take the U.S. title off TV for two. I just like they're not gonna do that face because I think it's about time that Cena was not their poster boy. If that makes sense. Well, he's so let's be honest. That's what Cena's he is. Cena's still he's gonna be the face of the company, with or without yeah. that title. Until he walks away, he's gonna be right. The face of the company. Until he decides to hang up the boots, go home, maybe do he movies, to... whatever. Maybe he finally he decides yeah, to put a ring on Nikki right. Bella. Well, let me let me let me put it this way. I know he won't he lose the match, but I've got fingers crossed that he does because I think it would be good for WWE. Best That's for business. Yeah. So. You know, like a wake up call, like a shock, like holy shit, and waves move across, which is holy shit. Cena lost the fucking fight. But we both know it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Fuck you, Cena. I'm going to scrape your... Well, actually, I won't scrape your fucking lament over my computer because I don't have white spirit and it leaves a really nasty stain. All right, so... WWE World Heavyweight title match. Rollins versus Kane. If Demon Kane loses, Corporate Kane will be fired from being the director of operations. Kane. Oh, my God. Rollins. Rollins. You're really honestly picking Kane to win the WWE title? Yeah, I might, I might, I might I'm, dude, I support Why Bristol I Rovers, right now? for fuck's sake. <laughs> I'm an <laughs> underdog guy. You're it, definitely, well, you're definitely going to be the contrarian. What if Seth gets himself... Well, why would they set this fight up? It was going to well, be a well, complete trance. Well, look at it this way. They have an out here. If Demon Kane loses the match, Corporate Kane will be fired from being director of operations. So, you know, he could Kane could still win by DQ. He won't win the title. Very true. Very true. He, he won't win the title, but but he'll still win He's the match. He's got a shot. I guess. There's an out. Dave didn't specify. Dave did not specify. He just didn't say Kane was going to win. Okay, that's right. very true. 
Right. Say Kane he didn't say he was going to win, but, but yeah. Yes, but, I know, right? You have to understand something because I support, you know, well, Liverpool's the same thing. I support shit, Brit, uh, you know, uh, British football teams. Um, <laughs> I'm all about the underdog. So, right. do you know what? I'm rooting for game. So, yeah, I mean, they have, yeah, they could do the old dusty finish, if you will. It's not, it's you not will. out of the question. Give me this one. It's not out of the question. It's not out of the question. Right. Especially because there's the out, you know. But I could see, you know, I, they could just go the full-blown. Oh, the... bollocks. We all know he's going to lose. Sorry. <laughs> well, yeah. He could still win by DQ, you know. I think I named one of my side-scroller Sundays, Cena wins by DQ, LOL. <laughs> so, anyway. The main event. The one this whole pay-per-view has been built around since the first break of a pay-per-view. Taker, Lesnar, the final chapter. Hell in a Cell. He's got the, you know, oh, do I say it? Technically, he's got the ability. He's got the, um, the, the schooling and the class to take it. Whether he can maintain that momentum, you know, yeah, I question his stamina, but I still think it's on the cards. I really do. You think by the time Taker gets his win back and we see Lesnar's first loss in clean and how long? Two, two and a half years, wherever the fuck it's been. Oh, I'm not saying clean, because um, in a match like this, like any matches like this, um, it will never be clean. Well, when you, you, you pair up two people like this, um, it's not going to be a clean fight. Well, it clean, really isn't. as in, you know, cleanly, no bullshit, no, you know, schmoz, no distractions, shit like that. Crap counting out of the ref because he's looking the wrong fucking way. Yeah. You think this might be the time that Taker, you know, he gets his win back for right. the you conquering can, of the streets? You know what? Next week on Slamcast, you can all laugh at me. I openly ask you to laugh at me, but I think he's got a shot. I'm just saying, he's got a shot. Yeah, I can't. I don't know what it is. Like, I, I believe me. I, uh, you know what? No. I'm wavering. I'm sorry, Lord, for wavering. He can match it. He can match him on all the moves. He can match I'm him sorry. on his stamina. I'm, he can match I'm him sorry. on. I just, I honestly just believe that in this match we just. Well, see, I'm going back and forth because again, I'm, I'm debating whether or not he's debating. underrated, in the sense that people uh, don't the cell understand. Matches. They would they, they? Yeah, I know he's had like shortcuts and failings and stuff like that, but no. I honestly think with his stamina and his move sets. Uh, in his technical ability, I do think whether he does it or not, and all right, granted, it's more of a match that I'm invested in because of my heart as opposed to the logic from my brain, if that makes sense. But I think, I think on a good day, he could do it. I well, really, yeah, yeah, definitely. I see what you're saying. It's it's the Undertaker and Hell in a Cell. There's always a possibility he could win and pull it out. You know, if there anybody is Mister. No, also Hell. look at the age of these people. It's awesome. no Undertaker is Mister Hell in a Cell. Yeah, like, and he is. The match was pretty much designed for him to excel in. Uh, but it's also our Lord and Savior. Like I said, yes. you can laugh at me, but I'm still call, I'm still calling Kane. We're on to Undertaker. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, cause yeah. I, I'm even not sure how to call this. I, I'm wondering if this might be the time they beat Lesnar finally, and but Taker gets his win back. I don't know. I'm saying Taker, but again, I'm not. I say Taker on that one because I think if Taker he, loses, because he's because not would they be would they let like one of their iconic wrestlers who you know makes so much money for them off merchandise drop away? Yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, and that's the, not a fair thing to say in a fight. Oh, I know that. They'll, they're, they're willing to let The Undertaker go because this, at some point in time it's going to be a liability for The Undertaker to be out there because it seems like every time he goes out there and has one of these great matches, he spends a night in the hospital the, night, the mm -hmm. next day. That's or, commitment or to your job, mate. Or so, that's what I'm saying. He's given too much already. Um, I, but I am a believer that if he is going out on a shield, he's going out on a shield. In well, the then you got, to, you, you got sorry, you not you you've got to forget pain barriers, and you got to remember, you know, the adrenaline sheer pump of the crowd when you're in the ring. Yeah, yeah. That feels no, that's you. what I'm saying. That's why he's always collapsed out afterwards in, in the back and gorilla. Yeah, yeah. 
but I, he's not I, my favorite wrestler, but I, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna go Undertaker on this too because yeah, he's an Undertaker be. win means more than a Brock Lesnar win. If the, it, Undertaker losing this match means, you know, he's. he's I'm gonna call the end move by the way, before he pins him. Kicks him to take out an F5 or something. No, full body slam, full shoulder body slam, on the floor. Gets up, pins him. Jobs are good. Yep. But, but this should end time, the feud, though. This has to end it. This is you've been building this up as the final confrontation. This is it. We're ending it. Hell in a cell, as the match should be. A feud ender. The blow oh, it needs an end. Yes. It definitely needs an end because it's it, it's kind of got to the point where it's almost. And uh, I'm not disrespecting the wrestlers involved in this, but it's almost got to the point because this feud's run so long. Yeah, it, we've they so like become comical. Yeah, they've, well, it's not at that point yet, but you end it with Hell in a Cell. I'm fine with it. We've gotten great matches yeah. out of both these guys. And these have been big draws. Yeah, and again, I think if uh, Undertaker loss means you know he's he's done. I think I think that's what yeah. honestly means. So I, I think, think Taker's going to go out and test yeah, yeah, WrestleMania. Yeah, if, he, yeah. if he loses this, do we think he'll retire? Um, no, because I just I. Uh... I, I don't think he loses this because I just think his retirement is WrestleMania 32 in Texas. in Texas in the biggest stadium show of all time. Yeah. Yeah. If he, if he you know, I, I'm calling him, but uh, I have to say, you know, fair play for WrestleMania 32 if he makes it there. But mm-hmm. I think that's the point where he should just draw the curtains and just say, yeah. I'm done. I mean, go out, go out on a yeah, high. Yeah, I said before, out. I thought WrestleMania 30 was gonna be. I thought when he, when Brock Lesnar beat the streak and it, the streak was done, and you could hear a pin drop in that fucking arena, you know, we had all the fate, the shocked Undertaker fan, we had the announcers completely lay out, all that. I thought that was it for Taker. Nope. <laughs> Yeah, we were wrong. <laughs> even even wrong before you guys sucked me into um wrestling and, and got me addicted to this um sport entertainment, I have to say that Undertaker was always one of my favorite wrestlers. So you know, if he's gonna go out, go on a high. Yep. So hopefully he does make it to WrestleMania thirty two. But I could see that <sighs> Call it quits yeah. there, mate. Call it quits there. Still, if cause... Sting can go one more match too, you build that Undertaker Sting up. If you still want to do that, I'm pretty sure you, you go any further, mate. I'm pretty sure yeah. you're gonna get like fucking arthritis oh. and a massive amount of bone disease. But you see what I mean? If you want to do, you know, Sting's final match too, and Taker's final match, why not have them go out together, build it up as you know, this is their final match, period, and then. You have the you'll have the drama around that you know outside of you know the street, so yeah. It's gonna be very very interesting, man. It is. It's gonna be you know. Are we gonna we gonna we gonna do a cast on that? By the way, the same. Yeah, we'll do slam cast on our you know Hell in a Cell review and all that shit, and we'll uh, more than likely I'll be bragging about you know WWE Two K Sixteen. By the way, WWE Network, um, I couldn't help but notice that you've done it for four months in a row, that you've debited my bank account twice every month. Really? I called you, saw that shit out. Getting expensive. Maybe you have, maybe you have two WWE Network subscriptions. <laughs> I got one, I checked, trust me. It's the first thing I checked. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's going to be hell in the cell. Who knows what we're going to get out of it. I guarantee you this, though, at least 50% of the people aren't going to be happy. (laughs) At least 50% of the people are going to say this is the greatest pay-per-view of all time. And at least 53 people are are going to say this is the worst pay-per-view of all time. I'm never watching WWE. Canceling my WWE Network subscription. That's what we have come now become as wrestling fans. I mean, I've, you know, I've, there's way more enough content on that network. You know, they've been adding a lot of original stuff. 
got a great, another great episode of the Austin awesome podcast this week. I thought we did a great job of they do these a great job of humor. Yeah, like I love that you know you saw his try. I love it. I hate the fence around my property. I don't I don't like being around people. Like he's, it's just I love hearing that. You know I love the Coors Light line. It makes him. It makes him like come across like not so much as like it just. Yeah, a you know dick. he's you know just a regular dude. Do you, do, you, do you know what I liked about that though was because it's someone who suffers from um, social anxiety. When I heard him say that, I don't think like, so much social oh. anxiety. He just doesn't like being around people. You know, he talks. You know, he's like always oh, humble around my kids. You know, there's things like that. You know, he, the Coors Light line. There's, you know, he talked about the infamous shooting star. <laughs> at WrestleMania, which, I mean, there's been a video of him doing the move. You know, there's this brief mention of Shelton Benjamin in there, but that he was talked into doing yeah. it. That he was talked into doing it. And Shelton Benjamin <laughs> cocked. What? Yeah, but, you know, it was a great watch. I liked it seeing it. Watch. You know, he talked about the streak. He's like, yeah, I knew that was a huge thing for me. I think, you know, I think it's, I, I, it's great that they showed the camaraderie between him and the, the, you know, that Brock has the respect of mm-hmm. his peers. You know, I guess like there's a lot of people sometimes question that, oh, people in the locker room hate him because he works in the Like, no, him, the rapport between him and Austin were two great friends. They were talking about texting each other. Going back and hunting. <laughs> bullshit. Which, going hunting. Which, I would love you know, to see I, that. I, I, I agree. I, I, I really, really like that because um, you look at so many people when they do, you know, the backstage scene and they I, I love this person. I hate this person. They come up with a bunch of reasons, but it's really, really nice to see, you know, the respect between individuals in this sport in the locker. And it it, it, it just kind of nice, you know, like, I, I don't want to sound like I'm being really gay right now, but it's just kind of nice because it's like, oh, wait, we forgot that, you know, um, as an athlete, like, much like any other sport, you have respect for, you know, the other people around you. Yeah, so that was kind of cool. co-workers because they're not athletes. These guys are they're co-workers. That's the way to look at it. Like they, they all work in the same place. It's not like they're like professional athletes. Like they compete against each other. They're co-workers. They're all working for the same spot, same same goal. Uh, but yeah, that was a great. I hope we see more of it, more more of these. I hope we get at least once a month. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, that's it, man. I think we should bring it home from here. We're doing Iron Sheik Tweet of yeah, the Week. Yeah, let me and, get, the, uh, get over here get the damn... Cue up that old Do you have your there? Tweet of the uh, Week ready to go? Yeah, pretty awesome. much. I mean, yeah. again, I, I favorited his account, so I get notifications every time he tweets. So. I hope I hope I leave... I hope this one leaves you, you know. Okay, hold on, I'm trying to get it. There we go. do 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 do, do. Thank you, Popes. <laughs> I think you meant. as always had a lot of good positive things to say but also had some poignant wise things to say uh reiterated the fact that if he could go back in time he would break hulk hogan's leg yes something that, hashtag something that back sure, in the future day something <laughs> that i'm sure he wafers on back many times but uh this one especially going at old favorites an old target of shaky baby was was in the news again Justin Bieber, sorry, but you have raisin balls. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your iron. Short and simple. Fucking bullshit! You also said that his uh, approval to Daniel Murphy, Daniel Murphy is officially now Iron Sheet class. Yep. So that's also great moments in Iron Sheet. I have an amazing idea for um, 
uh, Kickstarter, by the way. If we get 100 grand together, um, can Unsheek kick the living shit out of Justin Bieber? <laughs> Uh, I mean, I'm sure it would take a little bit more. Oh, God. I'm sure for 100 grand, the Iron Sheik would kick the living shit out of any one of us. <laughs> yeah. All right, let me, let me, let me downgrade my project. Us, let me downgrade my project. Um, Iron Sheik, if I give you 100 grand on a kickstart program, um, will you kick the living shit out of my neighbor? Because he's really getting on my fucking tits. I think for the 100 grand, Iron Sheik will attempt to kick the shit out of anybody, or at least verbally kick the shit out of anybody on social media. I think at that point in time, you're, he'll... Roll up a guy. newspaper, piss on the end, slap him in the face, and just say, No, it's Sunday. No, it's Sunday. No construction work for you. <laughs> and then when he you says, really like, Why were you really allowed to do it? Man. You can say, Fucking bullshit, and then slap him again with my piss-soaked newspaper. <laughs> you get oddly specific there. I know, he is. All right. Down. Why don't you just call out your neighbor, man, and call him, challenge him to a match right now while, you, while you're at it. Down at the Bristol Velodrome. We'll mention that when you um, end the call and talk about it. Yeah, so anyway. uh, plug, plug, any plug, plugs. All right, you can... You want me to go, or...? Yeah, I mean, you're... No, Dave could go first. Yeah, Dave let's go, let first. Dave go. Fuck it. Oh, you didn't give me a chance to find a really dark plug. You oh, crazy. fuck it. Give me, <laughs> great, so give me a second here. Uh, and I'll just do my plugs quick. I'm over on YouTube at the Gaming Pegasus 187. I'm on Twitter at Gaming Pegasus 187. I'm on Facebook at Nick Horacek. Instagram, Xbox Live, fucking Wii U, Pegasus 187. Just counting down the days, the minutes, the hours to WWE 2K16. Because It's coming, baby. It's coming. Yes, like you're getting an Xbox One. Yeah, Which is and then we're going to throw down. Uh, Be kind to me, Nick. Be we could have, to, to realize this, we can actually have a, do the podcast on Twitch. Holy shit. Oh, oh shit. That's, just, that's for later, future plans. Future Hashtag plans. future plans. Hashtag future Slamcast plans. Yeah. But yeah, I'm all over the place. I'm going to be working tomorrow, so yeah, it's going to be a nice fun Saturday. See what the Packers are is on that, a bye week, that, but they're six that, and zero, oh, baby. Um, IGG and actually my final, you know, kind of before I go back to work, Back to the Future Day podcast. Yeah, we still gotta get that done because you were sick as shit. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, God. By the way, I don't believe in you, but thank you. Um, of all the days in my life that I could be sick, thank you for making it on my birthday because I pooped so hard and threw up so hard. That both ends of my body hurt. You're a wanker. Well, shit. Dave, where the hell can we find you? You could find me standing steadily over the dead corpse of a lion. Is an American dentist thinking I've just destroyed my career. But, <laughs> but it was worth it because I shot this lion. And, no, and you, you didn't, you wanker. wanker. It's, it's not, not totally, totally worth it. Jesus! This is ending us, man. Did that make the news over there, by the way? It, it, it did, but the, yeah. the guy got off. Of course he did. Rich Fucking mother... wanker. Yeah, cool. well, it happened, of course. I'm not shot. Species and you of shot course he got quick. off, you know, because he's fucking rich, two-tier justice system. Anyway, Blonde Boys Post 1975, uh, go check out our video where we basically... Make the away, our, um... Enemies list, yes. Yeah. And I threw in a bunch of NES footage because... And the only person who thumbed us down is actually technically one of my friends, and I called him out on it. <laughs> well, shit. Whatever. Again, we were I right. By the way, Nick, we were right, my friend. We yes, were right. that's what it boils down to. We were right. Anyway, Brandon, please take us out. What about yeah, Leslie? Yeah, buddy. Oh, no, she what? dropped out. We lost... Yeah, her I've been to... laptop had issues. Oh, I think I'm here uh, pissed her off with my tangents. No, no, her Please lap... apologize to her for me. Hashtag no. tech problems. Hashtag she has a shitty laptop. Hashtag she... So do I. Dude, half my laptop doesn't anyway. work. I've got a big crack on the screen right now, and so I'm running on one third on my of my screen. Um, anyway, so yep. a brand that all hope on the Twitter. Um, may do some Twitch things. Brando Calrissian 420. Maybe not. Who knows? Uh, just winging it. Just winging it at this point, man. Just having fun, living life. 
doing my thing. Uh, check out the Premier Pals football podcast if you want to hear all my various sports rantings. Me and my buddy. Can I be on? Can I be on? Can I be on? Can well, I be you'll, on? you'll get your time in the sun. Let us get a, let us get our thing down, and then we'll get used to having a third person on the show. Yeah. Um, you know, I love the Premiership, and you I. You can listen what... to it though, and you can subscribe and do your thing on that. Oh, link me, link me. I just I sent you the thing in the chat, oh, uh, sure. and then I invited you Sexy to like our biscuits. Facebook page. You can like that Facebook page too by checking us out on facebookcom slash Pals. And on the Twitter at, at Premier Pals. Um, yeah, that's about it. So if you like this show, you obviously like professional wrestling because you could listen to a two and a half hour podcast about professional wrestling. Uh, you should like and support professional wrestling even more by going out and supporting your local independent wrestling promotion. I guarantee you, no matter where you live on this planet where there is civilization, and there is people. And if you don't like it, trust me, it will suck you in. You will find it. You will be able to find it no matter where you live because there is people living their dreams in this business in yep. your local town. No matter where you live, I guarantee you there's people out there and all you have to do is just search for it. Find your local independent professional wrestling and support independent wrestling where you live because that's the future of this business. I mean, believe me. If what I said earlier on in this show comes true, we might not see, you know, independent wrestling. You might just be last of a dying breed, the independent wrestling promotion. It could all just be the WWE homogenized, accepted product. Scary world we could be living in, but um, support independent wrestling. It's the grassroots of the, of the sport. You could successfully entertain a family of four for under fifty dollars i guarantee you well for, okay for under a hundred dollars oh do it in bristol you can take a fucking family for four to you know professional wrestling for fucking 35 pounds exactly <laughs> it's yeah. the best it's the best fun money could buy for your kids if they're into wrestling so uh you don't have to go spend big money on the wwe shows oh hell no oh hell no so taking us home uh for the absent leslie joy uh for our uh, erstwhile co-host or erstwhile executive producer Mr. Michael Burr and for Mr. Lawn Boys post Dave Wade the birthday boy uh, for my lovely executive producer my new right hand man Nick Horacek I'm Brandon Lincoln saying go forth and spread beauty and light peace love and humpiness to all play my god name theme song let's get out of here